Hello everybody and welcome to our Friday night D&D sessions. I am Jaso, the DM slash the wizard slash the DMGM, whatever you want to call me. Who else is joining me this fine Friday evening? Before you all tell me, everyone keep in mind that we have both Tally and Flash missing this session. Uh, or Moz slash Slim. So they're going to be out, but I have all of my other friends and we already kicked things off, so we may as well keep going. So who else is with me tonight? Uh, hey, everybody. It's Luke. I'm playing Domo, of Goblin Warlord. And also Flash, who is a kobold lore bard. Yeah, yes. that's right. I'm sorry. He talks like this, like a radio DJ. <laughs> Smooth jazz. What's up? My name's Kevin, and I'm playing Musa, a normal little girl. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm playing uh, Harper. What's he called this time? Larger Rouge. Uh, Rockstar. Rocking amongst the stars. Looking for that new star. That new sound that rocks the stars. Also be playing uh, Tally. She is a Kalashtar druid. Circle of the moon. The moon. Hey, it's your girl, Amanda. I'm playing six, um, the Herringon Barbarian. Hi, everybody. I'm Nick. I play Vice, the um, martial artist, uh, actor, uh, endorser, influencer, uh, talented. Sure. <laughs> I hit stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you guys. Thank you, Mama Bear, for those inspirations. Um, I'll, I'll have Kevin or somebody remind me here uh, to make sure and dole yep. out an extra card when we come to that. Uh, also, thank you, Mousy, for these plus ones. I really appreciate it. Um, to go through our quick sort of table keeping before we jump into the session, I know we're, we're a little bit late, I apologize. We're always fashionably late, but uh, had some last minute dropouts, so I just had to prep for that. Um, I need to check my Discord messages more often. Uh, but a big thanks to this campaign's character art. Thank you so much, both Peachy Yuri and Iruichi. They provided both the beautiful character art you see around here for the players in the party, but also a good handful of NPC art as well. Um, so I always want to give them a big boost. Go follow them on their socials. Uh, occasionally they open up for commissions. So if you want to get some beautiful art done by them, make sure and go support them and uh, have them do some art for you. So yeah, thank you to, to both of them. Um, as you can see in the chat between Mousy and Mama Bear and whomever else, you can build up Twitch channel points that you can use to directly interact with our game. As you're watching, even just lurking, not only this stream, but outside of the stream, I stream outside of Fridays as well. Um, I'm kind of a variety streamer, plus our D&D primary content on Fridays. You'll be building up your Twitch channel points. You can see how many you have it down in the bottom left of the chat next to that purple weird bit icon. If you click on that, you can see what you can use them on as well, which is a whole bunch of fun stuff like inspiration for the characters, plus one to people's roles, as well as Twitch exclusive uh, or campaign exclusive rewards. Uh, such as the weird mitigation and the volatile weird uh, rewards. You can see all the details down below the chat there. Um, we also use stream stickers, as you can see Mousy slapping a couple down here. Uh, I have a whole host, a whole handful of free stickers that you can slap, but also if you are a subscriber, you also get channel exclusive stickers like the cute chibi characters you see all around here. Those being provided by at the arms dealer. I need to make her a little plug on my uh, my stream deck here. Go check out that beautiful art provided by the arms dealer. Go support her. Follow her on uh, Twitter if you haven't already. Um, she plays in our other campaigns. Uh, let's see here. We use the D&D Beyond plugin. It kind of works. Uh, there's not a lot of characters on there. I don't know why. I always try to add them before the stream and it never works. Uh, but you can go check out some of the characters and get some better uh, insight into their classes and abilities and fun stuff that they have. So you can go check that out by mousing over the stream. Both stream stickers and the D&D Beyond uh, extension are right, right over on this side, over on the right, if you mouse over. Uh, if you're on mobile, they should still appear for you both. I know the, heart, the uh, stream sticker stuff will be a purple heart next to the chat. Um, I'm also running a deal for those interested right now. This weekend through Monday, which is 2-7, I believe. Use code CAMPCARE 
over at the God Mode shop to get free shipping on <laughs> your good. order. Um, yeah, I always, always try to make it campaign specific for those of you paying attention and hanging out with us. So yeah, go use Camp Care, all caps, one one word, over at the God Mode shop. When you go to check out, you'll get free shipping. Uh, helps support the channel, get you some cool merch, and uh, get you some free shipping on it. I really appreciate everyone. Uh, Nick over there rocking the, the newest Do You Even Lift Bro Vice Tee. And I think Anna had bought one recently as well. Thank you, Anna, for buying um, and supporting the channel. Uh, big shout out to Hazards and Hijinks, Dice Legends, and Inna for the follow the past two days. Inna is from um, Brazil and learned to speak English by playing video games and helped me play through some of Happy's Humble Burger Farm uh, last Wednesday. It was pretty awesome. The internet is a pretty awesome place. Uh, that was really fun. Muito obrigado. <laughs> Uh, that is really it for the beginning of my spiel here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and play the intro. And as I do that, I'll hand out the inspiration to the players. And then when we come back from the intro, we'll roll some die to see who wants to give the recap. And then we'll dive right into the campaign. So we'll be right back, everybody. Back. This uh, Discord reactive Discord images thing is looking real uh -oh. weird right now. <laughs> it's like the the website is kind of working, but not really. Oh, now I'm getting the full error five two five. Oh no, is this working? Or not? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I don't know what's going on here. Let me try and plug these in. Hey, why don't we roll some die to see who wants to give the recap while I try and fix some of these pictures? Who gave it last week? Uh, f Slim gave it last week, I believe. Or was it Slim or Kyle? The, fl the flashback. Yeah. Okay. Oh, was it a flashback? Two character beauty. Literally my favorite thing, the flashback. It's a me. Oh, Manda. Manda, what happened last time on Perplexalo? So, last time, um, Maz, not, and I'm not gonna call her Maz, Tali mm -hmm. ran into the woods and, um, <laughs> How powerful is Amanda? <laughs> Sorry. How got powerful is Amanda? Ran into the woods, found <laughs> a shack thing, and inside were the words, do not win, written in blood, I think. So that was a yep. little concerning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then she saw a pirate guy get beamed away by the light thingies. That was a little concerning. Um, Domo, Six, and Flash ran off to find her. And we brought her back to camp. And we played a hot potato game. But it, instead of a potato, it was a plant. A spiky plant. A cactus, mm -hmm. if you will. Um... And the red team won. Yeah, yes. War cry. <laughs> and then there was like an earthquake thing, and it kind of freaked even Candy out. And she said it was time for the last trial. And then she brought us to a beach. Very good. 
That was a succinct recap. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, yeah, you were heading off towards your fourth trial, the final trial. Uh, Mousy, uh, this website that I use, it's uh, like a D Discord Reactive Images website, is seemingly down. Or at the very least, it keeps going in and out. So I'm going to go ahead, at least for this session, take off the images so you don't have those <laughs> nasty just... Uh, 404 error or this error 525 displaying for what everyone's picture should be because I don't want that to stick up there. So yes, just use the power of your imagination for his images. Uh, but you'll see them all on the screen here in the center. Uh, Team Warcry over on the left in red consisting of six, Domo and Flash, and Team Houtdini in green consisting of Lodger slash Harper slash Rouge, uh, Tally, Vice, and Musa over on the right. Um, you all have been brought over by Candy to the shorelines of the beach where the next task was uh, in front and ready to be challenged. And that's kind of where we left off. The very last thing that we did was uh, Candy had you go over to your individual pots that you see here that are color coded to your teams and inside you found your weapons. So those of you who um, initially started this arc waking up in the hut without your weapons, Domo, uh, Flash, Tally, and Musa, you now find them on yourselves. Six, you also find your, uh, what is it, your Warhammer, your Maul? Yeah. You find your Maul as well that you initially tried to hit Candy with, but uh, it disappeared. You now okay. find it here. Oh, I feel um, whole again. <laughs> let's see here. So yes, just to give you guys an idea, paint a picture one more time. You reach a shoreline surrounded by several rocky outcroppings, both on land and in the nearby waters. Two large ceramic pots sit on the beach near stone, one colored red, the other green. Blue waves lap onto the wet sand nearby. In the deeper water, several yards out, the blue hues shift to a near glowing red. The once clear twilight skies above you now grow darker as several black clouds have taken form. The distant echo of thunder can be heard. You watch as Candy uses a spyglass she's pulled from her backpack and peers into the distance. I think we ended last session with uh, Harper trying to slash Lodger trying to take a peek and uh, just kind of saw nothing but the hazy horizon uh, through it as you kind of peered ahead. Um, and that is kind of where we ended off with Candy ready to introduce the final trial. So, as it stands, I believe it is Team Warcry with how many badges? Warcry, two. Two, and then three over on Team Houdini. This being the final trial. Wait, no, no, opposite. Wait, no. Sorry. No. We only kept one. It's You guys you so, guys so Everyone wait, started out with a badge. The original purple heart one? Then yeah. yeah, yeah, we have three. Oh, have okay. Three. Okay. Yeah, so Team Warcry has three. Yeah. Team Houdini has two. Yeah. That's right. As each of you look out to the waters, you see Camp Counselor Candy turn around as she sort of does that thing where she collapses the spyglass and gripping it in a hand turns and looks to each of you and says well is everyone ready for the final trial ready seems like we have to be couldn't be more ready is it got something to do with this shoreline it sure does honey she says oh boy she looks to say to to each of you, can weird pressure currently exceed ten? No, it cannot. Discord. Um, Candy turns and says, "So then, making sure your environment is healthy and clean is paramount to being able to care for yourself and others. That's why, for your final challenge, this is the trial of environment." She turns and looks to you, Lodger slash Harper. And kind of points out past you and says, 
Here in the shore waters exist a number of nasty critters that make short work of any hapless swimmer. So I'd be careful stepping out there just yet, she says, pointing towards you, Harper. Just cleaning my shoes in the water. It feels nice. Of course, now, we don't want the hapless swimmer to succumb to that. So, your final trial will be cleaning the waters of the predators known as the Jelly Scorn. These nasty blood red colored jellyfish love to stalk the shallow waters of the island, hiding near colorful coral and moving silently through the thick sands kicked up by the ocean undercurrent to assault unsuspect un <laughs> I can't have a small stroke unsuspecting prey. <laughs> You'll be taking turns getting into the shore waters here to fish those suckers out and bringing them over to your team's respective holding pot to store so I can dispose of them safely. Spotting them won't be easy as the blue sands create an underwater mist that makes it hard to see through. You may want to get into the waters and swim further out for a chance of encountering one nearby under the water. Or you could always attempt to try and search one out from the safety of the shallow waters first. Just remember the further out from the shore, the more likely there are to be some. Uh, and just to point out, similar to the second trial, those of you who do try to use any type of uh, searching checks to spot one, if it is revealed for you, it is revealed for everyone because that's just how Roll20 works. <laughs> I have no way of sh easily showing one person one token and not everybody Deal else. with it. Yes, unfortunately. Um... Candy says, uh, be careful being, any, being near any of them. They do pack a nasty sting. The first team to successfully snag five of those suckers from the waters and get them deposited into your pot, your team will win the final trial badge of environment. Now, as for trial restrictions, well, for this final trial, there are none. Be as creative as you want, getting those critters safely out of the waters. Use your weapons, your wits, your magic, any and all of the above to claim victory. You'll each start near your pots, she says, pointing over to each of the respective pots. After you each line up, and I blow the whistle to kick things off. Any questions? Yeah, uh, do they have to be alive? No, they don't. Oh, oh, a question. Of course, she says, pointing her way. Does the other team have to be alive? It would make for a better challenge, she says, putting a finger to her chin. And if they all mysteriously die. <laughs> but I suppose if there's no other team to compete against... You would technically win. Okay, that was my only question. Mm. Domo, <laughs> Domo just like does that like really nervous smile to the other team, like. <laughs> so then, she says, she takes a step back. Nothing is off the table. Use whatever you can to get an advantage and win, she says. Is everybody ready? Howdy. So? Hypothetically. You see Candy wait for you to say something. Yes. Yeah. No, yes, yeah. Go, oh, go, go, go. oh, of course, of course, she says. And then you see her kind of pull a silver <laughs> whistle to her lips and give it a strong blow as you hear the ear-piercing... Uh, sound of the match kickoff. I'm going to have everybody please roll me some initiative. Oh boy. Hey, that's I'm going to cool. use that I'm going to use that plus 1 I got on the initiative. Can I do that? Uh sure. Woo. Oof. Well, I, uh, crit failed the initiative, so. Oh, Mousy giving me 
A card of inspiration. Thank oh. you, Mousy. Some of us are out <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh. oh no. <laughs> you roll a one on initiative. Does anything happen? You go last automatically. Okay, hang on. No. This is apparently a no. turn order that has more people on there. It's kind of it sure does. Uh, let me just take everybody off. Sorry, let's just remove everyone and then re-add them. When I pulled this turn order up, no one was on there. That was weird. Let's see if I can just grab everyone and do this thing that I always try to do to add them to the turn order. Oh, there we go. Take the two pots out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like All right. Figure. Two thirds of our team is under ten initiative. I feel like we're at a pretty good spot to not win. All right. Oh dang! Nobody did good on initiative though, <laughs> except for six and Lodger. All right. Six. Uh, the speedy rabbit, no longer small size, um, yes. or no longer, I guess, tiny size. Still small. Yeah, she's, she's still small. But you are at least larger than you were the uh, second second trial. You're up first. What would you like to do? So she said they were out in the water. We're guessing just like this direction. Uh, the right? She just said the further out you swim, the better. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on one side or the other. You have the opportunity to run into them likely anywhere. Just a higher chance the further out you go. She mentioned you could try to stay in the shallow waters and maybe dunk your head under and try and spot some. Or you could just literally try and swim out, kind of just dive down and see what you can run into. It's up to you. And are perception checks free like normal? Um, using a search action in combat or in this encounter would use your action. Oh, okay, so it's not it's not a check, it's a search action. Correct. Okay. Um six is going how tall do these rocks look over here? Um the smaller ones over here probably look like uh five or so feet above the above the water, so like five or so feet up. And then this one over here uh kind of tops off at about twenty feet higher than than uh the surface level where you're at. Okay, um, Six is gonna run over here. Let me do a little check. Okay. So she's gonna run over to this rock and, and then get up on this rock. Keep in mind, since water is not a thing we always run into in D&D encounters, unless you have any special abilities or items or anything like that, swimming in the water uh, counts as, I believe, double movement. Oof. So how many squares of water are you counting here, then? Um... None. I'm just... I'll just say you hop over to get to the rock. Okay. And then she's gonna dash. And... She's going to dash as an action, but she's going to use a bonus action for a rabbit hop over to that rock. Okay, you bound over to that rock. And then she's going to look out into, like, this deeper water over here, but she can't do anything, I guess, so. Okay, yeah, that would be a search That's action. Um, yeah. So you, you get ready to kind of, like, peer into the murky waters to see if you see anything, but it, it takes... Six seconds every round, so it would take just a couple seconds for you to use your search action. So you get that far at least ready to do so. Um, Can I do like a perception check to see if there's anything like weird, weirder than normal around? Does that make sense? Like what caused the earthquake, you know, just see if I could see anything like that. Um, Sure, I'll let you do a very quick one. Sure. Oh, she doesn't see anything. <laughs> Never mind. Um, you don't really <laughs> notice anything out of place around here. There's a lot of sharp rocks out in the waters. That's not very typical. 
um, out even beyond the uh, deeper waters that you see here on the map. But uh, nothing really stands out of place that would make you, you know, be curious as to why the, the tremblings of the ground was happening. Okay. Uh, Lodger, you're up. Lodger takes off at full speed. One, two, three. And then he considers his next action. It's going to be to boat to dash again. One, two, three. I'm so tired. Um, and then I'm going to summon Baz. Oh, yeah, Baz. That's right. And how big are these things, by the way? Uh, you see Candy sort of like shrug and say, about the size of an average jellyfish, I suppose. All right. Um, I'm just going to place Baz. That's going to be the end of my movement. I just got to measure and yeah, stuff. Yeah, here. There you go. Put him wherever you want. See Baz begin to wade out into the waters. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, Here in this collateral reality, they're the size of islands. <laughs> We're on a jellyfish. <laughs> that was it for me. All right, Musa, you're up. You're muted, Kev. Yeah, I think you're muted. All right, well, let's go. Let's go take a swim. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15. Uh, would that be 25 from that first step then? Yeah, just, just assume when you hit the water. I'm not going to be like super you know like rulesy but whenever you hit like this this first line of white that's when it starts getting your feet kind of gets caught in the sand and the water begins difficult terrain essentially <clears throat> might be qu mm, never mind i double moved um i can't can i do it like a perception would that help find jellyfish like spot jellyfish uh you could absolutely use that as a search action if you have one available if you double move then then no okay i am but done then you are out in the waters ready to begin peering around tally is up next oh that's me uh tally tally oh she's got a speed that i know that is Thirty. Thirty, and then she'll dash to five, ten, fifteen, and then she's gonna transform into a. We said that these are normal-sized jellyfish, so like can fit into a bread box. Um. You would assume they're probably, at the very least, small size or smaller, judging by the pots and the, the top of the open pots, uh, the ceramic uh, pots that Candy is going to have you put them in. Good enough. She transforms into a giant toad. Nice. Which is a size that I'm I assuming it's in the right large beast. Large size. Large. large. Large beast. Unlike a giant elk, which is huge, as <laughs> yeah. we discovered last week. That's a little confusing. <laughs> Each of you watch as Tally's hair recedes and her skin becomes this kind of bumpy reptilian skin as her form grows into a large looking frog as she kind of falls down on all fours. Takes a splash into the uh, water there, jumps with her frog legs, and then mm -hmm. swims for another. How does. When you shape shift, do you. How does that work for speed? Uh, you you, just you take on the speed of whatever the animals is, yep. 
So mean like but if I've you've, used if you've already used your before, is what I'm saying. Yeah, if, if you've already used some of the speed, you get that speed added onto it, I believe. So if okay. a frog can move 40, but you move 30 already, you get 10 more feet of movement. Okay, sweet. Um, oh, that yes. makes sense. It's got yeah. a swim of 40, it's move 15, the jump was a, f a, a free action for running. And then, so we should go. True. Jump doesn't give you extra movement, though. Keep that in mind. It, it uh, subtracts from your normal movement amount. Start OBA. Sorry to complicate things. No, you good. It just pulls me back ten feet. The fun of water. Bloop bloop. She was swimming, yo. Go big frog. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Anything else for Tally? That'll be it. All right. Next up is Flash. All right. Flash. Uh... <laughs> this is pretty good. All right, Flash is going to sort of yell above the waves, like in a way that hopefully Six can hear him. <laughs> and she's sure. going to, don't worry, Domo, I'll stop him. And he, he he's going to run and do a convincing face plant on the ground as a, a fireball narrowly misses Tali and lands somehow just short of... Our, our sworn enemies out here so somehow just just missing them <laughs> barely and creating a giant depth charge directly in front of them. <laughs> so uh, Flash is going to run drop prone and cast a very poorly poorly aimed fireball in the, in the water in front of the rest of the team okay what's what's the intention with the fireball kill Kill or disable any jellyfish that might be in front of them is his intention. Okay. But he's he's trying to make it look like he was casting a fireball at them in the trip. Can you roll um Can you roll Gimme a uh deeds? Gimme um No no no. You, you you can go ahead and do that. No performance needed. Okay. Gimme a D four roll. Okay. And then just roll me like one one damage attack. If if something would be hit, for example, under the water, since you don't see any targets, how much damage it would do? Okay. Thirty one. All right. Um, you watch as you launch or flash launches a fireball that sears past Tally as her giant toad form and sort of like splashes into the water. And within another second, there's this, yeah, the, the, the kind of depth charge. You, you see like the, it's like an underwater blast. The, the water around in front of Tally and uh, Harper's clone kind of builds up like a bubble before exploding in a huge splash. Um, and rising to the top, uh, with a cloud of red spewing around it is what looks like a jellyfish type creature, which you can only assume to be the jelly scorn. <laughs> Domo squints and goes, uh, Oh no, Flash, you really mucked it up this time. And shakes her fist at him half-heartedly. <laughs> Anything else from Flash? I uh, know that'll be it for him. Okay. Uh, Kyle, Luke, Amanda, you get another inspiration from Mama Bear. Sick. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and grab those. Everybody's got one, right? Okay. Ooh, I've got two of a kind. Right. Safe side. I have this. Uh, Vice, you're up. <laughs> uh, start running. 5, 10, 15, jump over flash, 20, 25, 30, 35, assume that's 45. Uh, yeah, difficult terrain from there on out. Your feet begin to kind of sink in the, the wet sands. And I would like to dunk my head underwater and see if I could see anything. Sure. Give me a... That, uh, a search... Or, uh, yeah, it'd be a search, so a perception check. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's my second one in a row. Uh, the waters are pretty <laughs> dark, and you can see the swishing uh, sands make it pretty difficult to see. Perhaps maybe deeper in the water you'd have better luck. But first, I need that D25. Plus oh, D3 damn. roll, please, as you trigger the weird. It never ends. Alright, uh, a 2 on the D3. I got a 15 on the 25. Okay, so with a 2, and that means... You go up to 4, but you're still in the low range. And then 15 on there. Uh, will you please roll me a D6, please? It's never a good sign. This is fine. That's a 1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One's all aboard. Um, appearing like next to you is a small-looking creature that looks almost disc-shaped. Uh, you at first maybe think it's a jellyfish, but you see it floats above the waters and has a number of appendages. A flump appears next to you and oh, says, yeah. <laughs> Vice, uh, I, I've been waiting for an autograph, he says, as he seems to like be reaching around, assuming awesome. he has something on his person. He says, where's, where's my notebook? Where's my notebook? Uh, well, do I even have I might have something in my inventory <laughs> that I could sign <laughs> I'll, I'll dig through I, I don't have anything else I could do so I'll start searching around on my yeah. person to see if I get sign oh, hey, I'm a little buddy <laughs> just pass my turn there that's perfect everyone watches is a fan out of nowhere as a flump just appears asking vice for an autograph as he begins to dig through his packs doma you are up <laughs> all right uh very uh very boring turn for domo but uh domo's gonna stow the bow on her back he's gonna get on all fours like a spider monkey and she's gonna she's gonna cunning action dash and full action dash for 90 feet of movement and I'm just going to clamber on I'm going to take a running jump into the water swim onto this thing and clamber up on top of it. Uh, you feel as you swim through the water that it <laughs> appears to uh, you're able to cut through the waters with a more ease than you are used to as you realize you're wearing a ring that lets you swim much better I believe that's right I'm guessing the rock is also difficult terrain, though, if I can't climb. I um, can't climb! I was going to say, I think you can, I, though. I can't... I only need one dash to get there. That's amazing. Wow, I'm I'm a... I'm a... Navigable lass. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I still have a full action. Wow. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just do... Instead of investigating for signs of a jellyfish... Domo's going to do a perception check, which is much worse. I've heard just like looking for like jellyfish out in the water. Sure. As sure. her action on the turn. I mean, she's she's at least trying, but her eyes aren't as good as as her brain. 14 on perception, not terrible. Uh, with a 14, you notice uh, there is one out in the waters directly south of both you and uh, six at about what you would assume to be 10 spaces below the surface kind of shifting in the simmering red Ooh. out further down uh, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll yell the six and, and and tell her to dive down there and, mm -hmm. and go get it that's, all that's right all Domo's doing. okay speaking of six you hear this you can also see where uh domo has pointed this out to you um that jellyfish seems very far away uh, so six is gonna take an action to look for some closer sure sure 21. Uh, with a 21, you peer around the waters and are able to see one that is a little closer to you. Probably 30 or so feet closer. Mm -hmm. 
it's just still a ways away, ain't it? Yeah. All right. She's gonna dive in. So she hops off of there. That's just five feet of movement, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you dive in. Then, you can feel the cool waters around you as you go underneath and begin to swim that way. What's the rules for like using your weapons in the water? Uh, I think the only rule is disadvantage. Unless it's a crossbow or trident or dagger. Makes Those sense. are the aquatic weapons, I believe. Okie dokie. Well, that's it for six. All right. Uh, similarly, uh, the one that you spot six is about 10 feet under the, the surface that you can see here. Uh, Lodger, you're up. Lodger and Baz switch places, so then Baz runs up one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm hmm. With a pop, um, and you switch with Baz. Lodger will make a perception check. Everybody sees the jellyfish but me. I want to see the jellyfish. Let me see the jellyfish. Yeah, good point. Spears, too. Makes sense. Perception check. I'm bad at it, but I'm persistent. 18. Uh, with a 18, you are able to spot... Um, a jelly scorn just about 10 feet to the left of the one that sort of got pretty badly blown up from the fireball blast from Flash. This one, similarly, about 10 feet under the surface. Can we go for that one? And the other one. Bring both of them. Um, and... The one that was hit by the fireball blast, just to be clear, is, is on the surface. Yeah, that'll be it then. Okay, I'm putting two on these, which represents there are two spaces under the surface of 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, very good. Musa. All Some right. jellyfish are being spotted by the various teams here. I'm going to, I guess. I wish I could get 10, 20. 30. I think you could I crawl onto Moose if you wanted to. Onto Tally? Or onto, yeah, sorry, onto Tally. What is she, what, what is Tally again? She is a giant frog. Yeah, that might work. I, and I, I'll, I'll shrink a little just to make sure if I have, like, just change my size. Uh, no, no, you, you, you'd get on okay. fine. I think, I think like getting on and off amounts is just half of your movement. That's fine. Yeah. Then I would have done it back here and yeah. Yeah. Kind of just clamber up on top of Tally, who's a giant toad. You ah. see the side of like her face. One of her big eyes just kind of runs back to notice you cl clambering up and then back towards what seems to be her focus, which is the, uh, jelly scorn up ahead. Let's get him. This, now we can both move faster. Uh, was that just a single um, movement? Was yeah, it? and but I'm I would just I I don't I don't think I have. Well, I guess you can do like a hold action or something if you wanted to. Roger says, go pick up the dead one. Actually, hold Tally on. can get the one under the water. Tally just responds by licking her own eye. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I'm going to cast my 
mage hand. I'm also going to use some meta magic to increase the distance to double it. Okay. That's a sorcery point. Um, so I, that way I can cast it six um, far enough to go and scoop up this um, jellyfish, actually. And just in that case, I'll just bring it back to me and I can next turn. I can actually just move back, start moving back to the. I'll just jump off, actually. I'll just I, let's say I just was off of her and I'll just. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. That works. Um, you run your hand. Or you you watch as your spectral hand goes to uh, grip at this this downed jelly scorn, and um, can you can you move that or does it just what happens? Um. You you watch as the spectral hand is able to like run run underneath the the what seems to be now dead body of the the jelly scorn and like it picks it up as it floats above the water. I cannot interact with it. Okay. Well, it it's does seem to have it in its grasp, at least. Um, but yeah, so I would just pull it back towards me. And also, since I'm I'm going to use my um, my meta magic, activates my Fey Wild Shard, which oh, lets me roll on fuck. its Wild Surge table. Lusa, the ultimate chaos. <laughs> Musa goes to, like microwave a hot pocket as a snack, and like her kitchen just grows grass everywhere, and <laughs> a horse head pops out of the microwave opening when she goes to get it. <laughs> oh. The seventeen. Oh. So what's seven? Sorry, seventeen. You grow oh. a long beard made of feathers that remains until you sneeze, at which point the feathers explode out of your face. <laughs> <laughs> Makes <Nice>. sense. <laughs> you grow a long, furrowed beard made from luxurious feathers. Um, <laughs> oh, your your mage hand, is that able to, to move the uh, jelly scorn, or does it have to wait until next turn? As long as it is 10 pounds or under. I will say that the jelly scorn are very lightweight. But I kind of figured. So, yeah, I thought, yeah. So I'll pull it over to me. And that All way, right. next turn, we can we can head in. How uh, it, Does it just move the full way over to you? Yeah, as long as it's within 30 feet, or since I doubled it, 60, I can just move it okay. back and forth. Okay, yeah, yes. Within 60 feet, then, yeah, that counts. So you watch as almost speedily... The spectral mage hand comes right back over to you, holding this dead body of this jelly scorn. Dang, that's a cool overlay. The mage hand. Yeah, the hand looks good. Oh yeah, and a uh, perfect animated spell, something like that. Perfect spell pack, animated one. There you go. All right. I, I'll, I'll take this one back in. Keep going. Looks like Flash attempted to smear your team with a fire fireball, but instead has helped you to fish up a jellyfish. Uh, we move over to Tally as Giant Frog Girl. One, two, three, four, five, six, and just makes a bite attack on this, which is plus four. Or uh, 14 to hit. Uh, 14 is going to hit. All right. Was that done uh, with disadvantage? Uh, she's a uh, giant toad. She can swim and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the target is grappled. It has a DC if it tries to escape, but otherwise it's restrained. And I can't bite another target. Uh, I am also going to go ahead and swallow it. So I'm just going to be holding it in my guts. <laughs> uh, All right. Plus two. And it takes a uh, pow. Oh, fuck. 
critical Ooh. amount of damage from the bite. Uh, 12 damage. All right. You gulp this thing down. Oh, and also find D10 poison damage. Damn it. This thing hits hard. <laughs> Do what now? Six, six additional poison damage from the bite. All right. Um, so it can attempt to escape on its turn. It's a grapple. Um, otherwise, it is blinded and restrained and in total cover from every other attack. Gotcha. Anything else from Tally? Um, just moved six, and we can move back seven, eight. That's right, great. Right? That's 40 feet, yeah. I think that's all what you got. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you begin swimming back, Tally, you feel in your guts a nasty feeling as a stinging begins to surround and well in your stomach. You take seven points of poison damage. And it's going to attempt to try and hit you. They can't hit very hard, but so, let's see. It's restrained. That's disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if it hits. Do this. And it's blinded, so we've got disadvantage. So just <laughs> disadvantage. Super disadvantage. Double disadvantage. Double disadvantage. Does a 16 versus AC hit? Uh, 60? 16. 16. <laughs> the, uh, that sounds much more The reasonable. god jellyfish. <laughs> that <does the> okay. <laughs> uh, you take an additional 10 poison damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Blah! <laughs> Uh, you feel a stinging sensation as you can feel the creature inside doesn't appear to be trying to pull itself free, but instead attempting to likely jab you uh, with its um, poisonous body and stings. Uh, you feel the stinging sensation from one of its tentacles, but don't suffer any additional effects other than that damage. And it, it is ten done. Ten additional, you said? Ten additional, yep. Poison damage. Minus oh. uh, Flash is up next. Uh, F Flash stands up mm -hmm. from his self-inflicted prone and is going to move five, sorry, five, ten, fifteen? And uh, yells out into the ocean, don't worry, six, I've got this one. <laughs> and he's going to cast Dissonant Whispers on this jelly. All right. It's a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. I don't imagine they're very full of wisdom. Why? Yeah. <laughs> they sure are not. <laughs> 10 psychic damage. Uh, 10 psychic damage. And uh, the creature must immediately use its reaction to move as far away from Nasher as possible. Okay. Uh, use its full movement then. Yeah, directly away from him. Five. So that's going to be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, yes. 35. Good. <laughs> When you're going for six, begins to swim further out away from you. I think I spooked it, six. <laughs> uh, anything else from Flash? No, that's it for Flash. Okay. Vice. <laughs> uh, Vice is going to help his teammate out. Beat 10. Uh, dash. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, did Vice pass by Flash? Yes. Yeah. Can I, like, f 
faint that I'm making an opportunity attack but fall prone again. Sure, sure. Like he tri he tries to body block him, but then but Flash just keeps going. This is like it's like he's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot about the flump. Uh, Vice before taking off. Go, oh, yeah. hey, uh, um, here, limited edition, and hand him one of his darts. Oh, oh sick! My. He says as he grabs it in his tentacle, uh, flumpy got, arms. We gotta, we gotta do this. Uh, you can help if you want. Otherwise, enjoy the show. He and seems gonna... starstruck as you hand him this, and just like holds it in his hands as you're able to kind of just quickly get away. <laughs> You hear the sound of uh, what sounds like Flash as you turn around to look. Flash has just fallen prone into the waters behind you. He's, not even sure he's what he's doing. He's doing the family guy thing where he's grabbing his feet. <laughs> ah. uh. Yeah. Just like for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you can keep going, Vice. That's 40. That'd be 45. And then I'll 55, 65, 75. I'm going to try and work with Musa to collect that one to run it back for us. Sure, sure. Do I got to move down to it or? Um, I mean, like 85, that would put me there. Yeah, like you grab it from there. Yeah. OK. You and grab uh, it from Musa. I'll collect it for you from the mage hand and Musa and prepare to bring it back. OK. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, we move to Domo. Um, okay. Uh, Domo, since she can just climb up and down these rocks, is going to take a running jump. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'll dash with a cunning action. And seeing that the other team has got a pretty good handle on things, Domo does want to see if she can at least hit one of these jellyfish. Um, right. She's going to take her bow and just shoot at the jellyfish with a normal, regular old shot mm -hmm. uh, okay. from, from the rock here. I don't get to take advantage of the longbow's range very often, so may as well. He's uh, 23, and it's going to be 12 damage to him. Uh, which one are you aiming at? The one directly south of uh, of, uh, of, six? of six. Okay, uh, you so do. It looks like I'm actually helping, basically. Yeah, you you knock an arrow and you do that thing where you kind of count for the refraction of where it is under the water and aim just a little above or below enough for your shot to make up for the uh, the the sort of visual illusion on the surface and fire one off, even though its body is is sort of this blood red color you are able to see your arrow strikes true as you see a bit of uh, this kind of cloudy dark blood pull from its body as your arrow strikes into it all right we got him on the rope six take care of him poor six <laughs> anything and, uh, else for that's... domo <laughs> no see domo domo can't not help she's too like She's like, oh, but I gotta at least do something good. Her <laughs> six will never respect me again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's it for Domo. Six, you are up. Um, Your prey has swam sw swam away from you a bit. So, does six get the feeling that these little oh, guys Jesus. might be magical? Uh, you have no idea without a check. It's not a search action to do like an Arcana check or something. Arcana or, well. Yeah, I mean, I I'd say, say you could probably nature, maybe do right? like nature. Yeah, you could do nature. They're both minus one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, no idea. Um, this is a collateral okay. reality, so it's like hard to tell. It, you know, maybe, but maybe not. Never heard well, of a jelly scorn before. She is going to use an action to cast bolstering magic. Okay. On herself. So for 10 minutes, she can roll a d3 when she makes an attack roll or ability check and add that to the roll. Nice. So she's going to cast that on herself, and then 
Neptune's just gonna move. You feel the, the jellyfish. clarity of your abilities refined a bit as you bolster your body and mind. Can I make a perception check to see if there's any other threats? Or is that still a That'd search? be a search action, but you have okay. the potential to spot some that may be closer than the ones that are further south of you. Oh, I don't have an action left, so. Okay. Just, yeah, keep yeah. that in so, mind. You don't necessarily is have it an to. action uh, to rage? That's a bonus action. Yeah, she didn't. She oh, didn't rage. Oh, you she did some bolstering else. magic. Okay. Yeah, I did Got bolstering it. magic, yeah. 10, 20, 30, 40. And that's it. Six is doing her little doggy paddle. Mm hmm, mm hmm. The bunny paddle. All right. Uh, move over to Lodger. Lodger looks down and is like, oh, this, this is gross. Since man has weighed a distance of 30 feet, then transposes what have been stuck there. So I just need to measure that out. There's right there to that. Pop. Oh, they switch again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... Lodger looks at Flash and says, Look, we've already got two coming in, so as my count is it, I just gotta stop you guys now. And he pulls out his uh, sword and shield. <laughs> oh, well, shit. His axe and shield. <laughs> All right. Flash is like, Oh, no, please don't. I'll bully you. I'll push your face in the sand and kick dirt on you. You don't have to make it look that convincing, boss. <laughs> Uh, all right. What? Anything else from Lodger? Convincing of what? Uh, that'd be it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Musa, looks like Vice is ready to take, uh, the Jelly Scorn. Although you still yeah. have the opportunity oh. to grab it yourself. It's up to you. I'm, no, no, he can take it. Um, and right. that way I can try to find something else. Sure. Since I've got some range. Sure. With my L. So I will just let's see. 10, 20, 30. Kind of like, I guess I'll try to see if I find anything. Just do so. I'll do a. Hmm. How about survival? Would you take survival? Yeah, sure. It's just like trying to cool, try to stick my head in the water and see what I can see. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Take it. You kind of remember back to uh, where s some of the uh, areas of what Candy was saying, kind of the, the coral build up and stuff like that to try and use your survival to see where the next one might be. And you do spot one. Uh, that is about mid mid waters in between you and six, but a little nearer you. That's not too far off. Ooh, I can get that on my next turn with my with my mage hand. All right. Uh, um, can can you move the mage hand this turn, or does it have to wait? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I I don't I. Um... It just says the hand lasts for duration until you dis or until you dismiss it as an action. Hand vanishes if it's ever more than thirty feet away. You can from use you. your action to control the hand. Use your okay. action to control it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So I'll do it on my next turn. I can grab it. Yeah. Looks looks ready to roll. Uh, so with that, we'll move over to Tally, who has sucked down a jealous corn inside. It takes another. Six uh, stomach juice damage. It takes 13 of that. Mm hmm. Those uh, tally buttons on. One, two, three, four, five. I feel the uncomfortable sensation of a poisonous creature inside of your body. And then, uh, it's normal movement speed. It's 20, which is a disaster. <laughs> so, slow hops, slow hops. Um, could you use your tongue to like put it back in? Is your tongue long? Yeah, 
Uh, it, it doesn't have a rule on throwing it up, but so I was going to ask you, would you call it a bonus action or an action to blow up this thing? I'd say from here you'd need an action, but you could attempt it if you use your action to do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do that. And then hey, give oh, me yeah, like, um, it. what was that, Luke? I was like, yeah, make it. I want to see it like yeah. fucking hole in one on this. Give me like, um, like a acrobatics check or something. You're, you're a giant frog? Yeah. Right. Or you could do like an improvised weapon I thing. I think that's just like base decks on top of your attack roll. Yeah, neither. I'm showing you have a speed of 30 also, just so you know, not 20. Giant toad. Giant toad, not frog. Yeah. Uh, plus, I don't think it's got any acrobatics. It's just plus one. Oh! The 3D right dice rolled onto a 15, then back to a 7. I love it. Oh. Uh, you weird. go to lurch up and fling out this jelly scorn, aiming at your pot. Uh, you spew it out, and you watch as it lifts up into the air, but then quickly descends with a splat landing on the sand right next to Lodger. Blurps. Um. So I guess it's probably better that she swims. Um, she will. That was an action, bonus action. I don't think she got none of that. Let's check. Bonus action. Uh, that will be it. All right. Oh, um, actually, short combat shape, uh, heal. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lodger, you look at this sort of kind of like stomach juice covered and, and bloody jelly scorn. And as you are staring down at it, a tentacle comes out. It is still alive. Um, no. It stings you automatically for two points of poison damage. And then attempts to get you with one of its tentacles for 19 versus AC. Oh, 19 hits. Uh, you take five points of poison damage, and I need a constitution saving throw, please. I I kind of just imagine that, imagine that Tali spit it right in his face at that point. <laughs> <laughs> With a 19 versus AC. Um, yeah. I mean, these are some high um, rolls for the jellyfish. Well, is exhaustion two, is that disadvantage on rolls? What's uh, just ability game? checks. No. Not saves. Um, I will. Uh, I will use a mama bear bear's blessing on this. Nice. All right. For us. Thank you, mama bear. Save. Can't save, and I'll use a plus one on this as well. Looks good. Yeah, Ooh. nineteen. All right. Yeah, you feel the stinging sensation as a tentacle begins to try and wrap around your leg, but you pull back. You still take the damage, but no other ill effects. I keep dick. Uh, with that, it's Flash's turn. Uh, Flash stands up and says, Don't worry, guys. I found one. And it's going to move five, <laughs> ten, fifteen. This is great. And it's going to use inspiration to try to grapple the flump. <laughs> not the flump. That's hilarious. I, I don't know if he knows it's not a jellyfish or not, so let's just leave that up to mystery. Sure, sure. It looks like uh, one. You could mistake it for one. Yeah. Here we go. Thirteen. <laughs> Um, you all watch as, as Flash wraps his arms around the flump, who uh, sort of quickly looks over, seeing the grappling Flash and still trying to hold this dart from Vice in its hand, says, No, it's, it's my memorabilia! Get off! <laughs> <laughs> so Flash is now playing slap fight with the, with the flump. Uh, yeah, the, the, the flump is like, it's, it's doing that, yeah, like cartoonish, like, 
slapping in the face that does zero damage. Just trying to get Flash off of it. Um, anything else, Flash? No. You do have what looks to be a jelly scorn grappled. <laughs> uh, Vice, you're up next. <laughs> Vice has this jelly scorn. Uh, yes, wants you do. To try to try to dunk it in his goal. All right. You kind of hold on to what looks like its lifeless body as you begin to head back towards the pot. Ten. Twenty. I'll just let you move over there, and then we'll move the the thirty token of it. It's forty-five dash. It'll put me at 75 right there. All right. Um, with a interact o object free action, you dunk it inside of your pot. And you hear a whistle blown from Candy as she yells out using her uh, horn to everyone. Looks like Team Houdini has won in their pot. Congratulations. Anything else, Vice? Uh, Vice will pose and use Cape of Billowing to uh, <laughs> create a picturesque DVD cover of the achievement. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, we go to Domo. Uh, yeah, and then fi finish the rest of my move back oh, towards the beach. Sorry, sorry, sorry Roger. Roger. That's it. Roger points at this and says, I'm not touching this. <laughs> That's where I can get to. I'll pick it up next turn. Okay, you get close. Domo's gonna take a another shot at the one she wounded previously. All right. Jeez, if only I could roll this well normally. Uh, uh, easy 25. hit as you take aim with your longbow and sort of like just let loose the arrow above and watches its trajectory arcs, smashing into it. Uh, Seventeen damage. Piercing into it rather. All right, solid damage. But still, you can see even from the rock here, its body seems to be moving erratically. Uh, there is a large mm. amount of blood that's pulling around, but it still seems to be alive. Just knock it in the head and tie it on your belt and keep looking. I, I yell the six. All right. Uh, and that's it for Domo. Speaking of, six, you're up. Uh, okay. Um, far is this? <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, six is going to grab a hand axe mm -hmm. and try to throw it at the jellyfish. <laughs> All right, uh, it's it's not as elegant as you are used to as you go to toss this and it begins to much more slowly shift through the waters, but you can still make the attack with disadvantage at it. A thrown weapons no. actually don't have disadvantage inside of normal range in water. In water? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I take that back then. 19. Uh, hits. Beep, beep. Five slashing. Five slashing damage? Yeah. You watch as its body begins to stop moving, as it begins to slowly, slowly become still, and its body almost begins to sink in the water, although it's still ten feet below the surface. You have killed it. Is it dead? Okay, okay. Um, and that was her action, and that's it. All right, uh, Lodger. We, um, Lodger shouts at Candy. Could you read the contract to me again? What was the rules? In terms of restrictions. What the rules? What are we? What's the objective? Objective is to get five jelly scorn into your pot. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted to hear. Um, 
And then, uh, shit, I'm just completely out of phase with this. I did not look this up on my turn. Gonna find out if I can met if I can instantly dismiss my echo. I think you can make a new one. With the same. Yeah, I suppose that action. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am going to resummon Baz thirty feet from me. Mm-hmm. You watch as the one out in the waters just pops out of existence as another one is created or runs over to the red pot. And Braz is going to attack the red pot. <laughs> All right. Damn, Give bro me. won't even let us sabotage ourselves. An attack roll. <laughs> when at any cost. Especially if it makes us friends. Uh, I have the battle axe one handed. Pow. Probably doesn't hit. Does an eight hit. <laughs> An eight, uh, you strike into what you thought was a ceramic pot, but there is some amount of, of impact and resistance that surprises you, as it does hit, but not enough to damage it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he's got another one, so he'll make it through Baz again. Candy looks over at Baz and then back over at respectively to you larger with a sort of like a knowing like hmm smart move um this time uh baz is going for the finish he takes two hands on the axe wow, wow. 15 15 again a resounding smash against the side but no physical damage that you see <laughs> is bonus action action and movement oh movement i'll switch places mm -hmm. don't pop. take me you pastor jellyfish you're next to the red pot uh, roger will rp bend down to look at the pot and that'll be the end of his turn all right uh musa you're up <clears throat> You're a mute, Musa. All right. <laughs> um, I would just go ahead and use uh, control of the hand to scoop up the jellyfish. Mm, you have control over the hand. It moves over to the jellyfish. You see the hand go underwater and attempt to scoop the jellyfish up. Uh, but you watch as the jelly scorn quickly pushes back, throwing a number of its tentacles at the mage hand. It looks as though the mage hand is not able to lift up the jelly scorn while it is alive. Oh, okay. It's gonna be like that, huh? Um, unfortunately, that was my action, so I'm done. All right. Uh, tally. Giant frog tally. Slash toad. Oh, yeah. uh, gets 40 feet to right there and turns the light. 20, 20 plus. It's a huge Four splash eight, next to you, Musa. Uh, hits. Uh, sweet. It does damage and it's grappled and all that fun stuff. Alright, you suck it inside uh, of your body. RD 10 plus 2 plus D10. Um, so the interpretation of the read here is uh, 12 piercing, 8 poison. So 20 overall? Yeah. As you suck it down inside, gulping it in your toad body tally. Anything else? I rolled really well with tally on damage. It's <laughs> pretty good. Uh, that is... Yeah, that's it, because she can't bonus action to dash around. Um, All right. Yeah. Let me uh, just double check her spells real quick. Sure. I think I'm gonna, because I know it's gonna shock me. I'm gonna go ahead and battle heal again. 
which you can move on. I'm just going to roll it. I don't yeah, know you have a feeling it's oh. it's once you guys start interacting with any of them, they're probably going to go after you do if they're close enough. Uh, Tally, you feel it begin to move around this upsetting feeling of a poisonous creature inside your stomach. You take automatically one point of poison damage, uh, but it is restricted inside of your stomach and is unable to get you with one of its uh, tentacles. So you only take that one point of poison damage. And with that, we go to Flash. The Flump Flash. is fighting you, Flash, but it appears to not be doing much other than trying to, like, keep its hard grip on the dart given to it by is Vice. He, is he actually grappled by Flash? Uh, yes. That's... All right. Flash casts Enlarge on himself. <laughs> Everyone watches as yes, Flash grows to... Uh, is Flash? <laughs> no, he. I, I'm not even gonna upgrade his token because he just becomes what medium size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember if he's small or medium. He's he's small. I, I just teched his token. Yeah, he is small. He oh, goes to medium amazing. size. I'll get some rules of nature ready to play because he's gonna <laughs> drag the flump one, two, three, and that's it. All right, the flump fighting the whole way, but almost completely powerless in the grasp of Flash. It's mine! It's mine! You get your own! <laughs> and Flash is just like, bah! <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, with that, we move over to... <laughs> we'll move to Vice, then. Yeah, Vice is going to attempt to scoop up this one on the beach and bring it back to the goal. Sure, sure. Five to move it close up. to it. Twenty-five to move back. Mm-hmm. You slam, slam it dunk. into the pot, and as you do, you hear Candy say, "Looks like two for Team Houdini. When you gonna catch up, Team Warcry?" Mm -hmm. move Flash back is still just the... like yelling. And uh, I'll call out to the flump. Oh, you're doing great. Keep, keep it up. <laughs> Help me! Help me! It says, reaching towards you. That'll be everything I can do. All right. Uh, Domo, you're up. Uh, Domo's going to shoot the one that got dissonant whispered down here. All right. Uh, 16. 16 hits. That's uh, going to be 16 piercing damage. A solid shot. And you a can see eking out of it some, some dark watery blood or cloudy blood, I and, should uh, say. And th that'll be it for Domo. All right. Uh, that brings it here. Okay. Uh, six, you're up. All right. Six is going to move next to the jelly and so i guess that's 10 and then it's 10 feet down uh yeah one more 10 spaces down to grab it so if it's 10 feet down of water though is that 20 feet of movement um it was twice well they did the dead ones float Everything yeah, I'll, I'll say the dead ones float to the surface. I'll say you just need to move Georgie? 10 feet to get next to it. Okay. Well, she's going to move here then, and she's going to grab it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It floats to the surface. You only swim over 10. You can you can kind of nab it. What's and a nice boat? 20, 30, 40. And she's going to dash 50. 60, <laughs> 70. You have like, you have the three predator marks on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, you I know. Swim through the waters. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> That's um, funny. You know, just for fun. Mm-hmm. Well, no, 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 never mind. This is, this is it. 
for her turn. Okay. You feel good. You have you have a, a one in your hands. It's dead, so it's not going to try and sting you or anything. Uh, you have it gripped with your uh, gloves, so it looks like it's pretty safe to move. Uh, Lodge, you're up. Well, instantly appears next to this. He looks at Lodger, and Lodger looks at him and says, like that hotel room? He says, like that hotel room? And they just go. Uh. <laughs> no. Not, like, okay, something like that. The like Eiffel, that Eiffel Tower. At. The pot. Ah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and then they both just start going office space on this thing. Um, I've got a ton of attacks here. They both snort a line of cocaine. <laughs> Metal Gear Revenge and soundtrack still blaring in the background. <laughs> So the first attack action here is one from Lodger. 23 to hit. 23 Seven hits. Slash. Seven slashing okay. damage? Yeah. You strike at the pot, this time focused more with Baz at your side. As you strike, you hit firm with your axe. And this time you watch as a large crack forms across the entire body on the side where you struck the other team's pot at. Yay! Uh, Baz joins in on the fun and just like which smashes into it. Oh, sweet. Ooh. Critical fail. Oh, no. <laughs> Wild surge. Wild surge. Give me that. D3 or, yeah, D3 and then D25, please. Yeah. Aggravate it for one. Nope, that's not the right one. Let's see. I mean, that works. I'll use that as your, your D3 roll. Just give me that D25 roll. Uh, that puts you at seven weird pressure. Uh, three, on the D, the D, three on the D25. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, nothing immediately happens. Oh, exciting. <laughs> Roger takes another swing. How could it possibly get worse? 20 oh, oh, that's hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first. Why did you, why did you say anything? Why did you say anything? Before Bef the result came up, like an asshole. <laughs> before, uh, before we go over your hits, let's see, I have one more and then one more D3 roll. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna explore. And. Don't. Ooh. Feel your suit <laughs> tighten up pretty hard as you go to nine weird pressure. Uh, let's see what that 24 does. Um, you go to strike. Let me see. Okay, you, you go to strike uh, Baz slash Lodger. And as you do, suddenly the world around you feels as though it shifts up all of a sudden. And as you peer around, you notice that both you and your double are buried waist high in the sand. Um, oh, even though this happens though, your arms are free and the strike that you went to land on the pot hits and you watch with a crack, a shattering that pierces through the shoreline as Team War cries pot is destroyed. Uh, oh, into their waist. They just kind of do the Tusken Raider thing with their guitars. <laughs> waist <laughs> deep in the sand. Uh, Candy pulls up her bullhorn and says, Well, we have a fascinating end to the final trial. With their pot destroyed, that means Warcry cannot finish the final trial, <laughs> meaning... Wait, wait. Domo says, but they haven't won yet. <laughs> the rules were five jellyfish in the pot. Well, I 
I suppose so, but you would naturally be inclined to assume that they would get five into the pot eventually. Unless it were to be destroyed. Oh. Domo's competitive streak is getting the better of her. <laughs> Mainly Candy. because she really wanted to see Flash dunk that, that flump into, into the pot. Candy... <laughs> pulls out her spyglass and peers out to the sea and pulls it down and says, all right, fine, but hurry it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Me too. She, but Rod, Dad, what's my name? Roger says he makes a perception check the same way she did. 13. Uh, you see nothing out on the seas. What do you keep looking at? There's nothing out there. Oh, don't worry about it, honey, she says. You might want to pull yourself out of the sand. You pull me out of the sand. I <laughs> normally would help, of course, but not during a trial. But I'm so helpless. I think you'll manage, honey. Please. <laughs> uh, anything else from Lodger? Uh, no. Musa's up uh, next. <laughs> Unless yeah. Harper has anything. No, I can make a better use of it later. Okay. Uh, Musa, the uh, games right are back, still on? Um, all right. This changes my plan a little bit. <laughs> I guess I don't have to... I guess I don't have to slow down Six from getting back with a... jellyfish anymore. I mean, Six does have <laughs> a jellyfish in her possession. Elmo's pressing the game on us getting five, so we need that jellyfish. Hmm. Okay. I'll still... Yeah, I will move... Let me see. And 20. And now I will... Um... Use meta magic, two sorcery points to quicken a spell. Mm -hmm. So that way it turns one of my spells into a bonus action. Um, so I will use the mage hand within 30 feet to touch six. And with my quicken spell, I will, it's a touch spell. That's why I had a. I will cast... Where is it? Shocking Bis grasp. No, no. Uh, dispe uh, bestow curse. So... Jeez. Six has to uh, succeed in a wisdom saving throw. If not, I will choose option number three which is while cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action that turn doing nothing. Oh shit. <laughs> um, I'm definitely gonna use my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> you watch this yeah, you spectral are. hand come over and tap on your shoulder, Six. Josh, Josh, Josh. <laughs> oh, dang. That's oh, dang. 18. Immediately re-roll that. Oh no. <laughs> PvP. What? He's making me re-roll it. He's using I'm the using power my, of his card. Can I re-roll re it with advantage? Oh. Uh, it, if you have another card, then yeah. The D20 was advantage, right? I would have to use another card to get advantage again? Correct. Let's go to it. Wow, that's <laughs> dirty. That's a low down, dirty. Wow. It froze it. All right, so yeah, from now on, on your turn, you have to succeed in a wisdom saving throw to do anything. Okay. All right, anything and else, Musa? Um, no, because that will be, yeah, I use my bonus, my regular action. And this lasts for a minute. Concentration. Okay. Yeah, your hand disappears. Uh, Tally, you're up. Nope. 
That's me. Yes. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Does it take and... any auto damage? Uh, yeah. Three, three, six. Poison damage. Eleven poison damage. All right. And what are? Just attempt to spit it out. Try and go for the, go for the gold. You feel it stop. Squirming around in your body as you get ready to hawk it up towards your your goal. Uh, I don't think the dex is more than two. It did, does that so just ten overall? It, at most, does that go? Uh, you I'll you do spit it, it out, and it lands about halfway, landing right next to Vice's feet, similar to last time. It was a nine all day. All right, sweet, nice. Right next to your feet, Vice. Ah. Uh-uh. Anything else, Tally? Um, that will be it. All right. Flash, you have captured a Jelly Scorn, one that talks. Unfortunately, your pot has been busted. You're up. Well, we probably get half points if we put it in the other pot, at least. (laughs) So Flash is going to... Is going to... Is going to... Is going to move in the dash, dragging the float to the pot... And if 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 he's able to just drop him in there, like like just 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 yeah. throw him in there, he you will. just like grab it by the bottom of its tentacles and just like <laughs> sling it up and down into the pot with a, a, a smash. <laughs> flash, <sighs> like medium sized flash. Yeah, yeah, five foot tall now, flash. <laughs> He just yells, but I did it, six. <laughs> Candy looks over. And that's all. That's it. That's it for him. And looks back and says, Looks like that's three for Team Houdini. He <laughs> counted. That's even better. <laughs> that's even better. And with that, we go to Vice. Right, Vice will first try and scoop this one up that just landed on the beach. It is dead. You easily scoop it up. And bring it over. All right. You run That's over to the pot. Uh, you see, as you go to toss it in for just a brief second, a squirming flump inside as you just toss the dead body of the jellies going on top of it. <laughs> And that's four for Team Houdini. One more left. Who will win? She says. Realizing that the flump went in the bucket, Vice will try and put Flash in the bucket to score the fifth point. (laughs) (laughs) Flash will will squirm half-heartedly as as he picks up. He's picked up. Uh, you go to put Flash inside until you realize that at his enlarged size, he will not fit. He Like, his shoulders oh, catch, and only his head pops inside. <laughs> Can I leave him swirly, like, hanging out? Sure, sure. <laughs> Candy looks Did over just and like just says, uh, Look, we can stretch it some, but that's really pushing it. <laughs> uh, oh my god, this is amazing. We're walking back to the beach to hopefully get a fifth one. All right. Uh, with that, we go to Domo. Uh, Domo is still convinced that they've lost, but also she's real tired of the other team bullying her friends, so she's going to shoot an arrow at Musa. Sure. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, but it's a critical fail. She oh, meant no. to do that. Your arrow goes a little wide this time. And I need a D3, D25. As your pressure goes up to five. 21. Yeah, 21 on the chart. This is still the minimum table. Good, good. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, you you watch, Domo, as your hands become encased in two big warm meatballs, preventing Hi. you from using somatic spell components until you use an action to remove the meat from your hands. First hot dogs, now meat, now meatballs. I I, I, I yelled a sick. Sorry, lass, I'm out of commission. I got meatball hands. <laughs> you you feel your hands underneath, but you 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 can tell that you, they're covered in this this meatball substance that you'd have to get off first. And, and, and at this point, I think Flash's echoing voice from the pot would, would "Hey, Candy, can we just forfeit?" I don't know what Domo was yapping about about us keeping going now. I I would accept that. Yes. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, 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 on behalf of my team, I, I think we fall. In a stunning <laughs> is... turn of events, it appears as though Team Warcry has forfeited. The winner is Team Houdini. Congratulations, all. Back onto the beach, gnawing meatball off of her hands. It tastes good, and it's actually warm. Hey. There's a lot of it Yay. to eat. That was a good. That was a good game. I'm glad you liked it. Candy she, says she. She hands a meatball fist up to Lodger. You want some? Uh, no. Eh, you're, you're lost. Lodger refuses. Hey. His body half covered, sunk in the sands. Domo, Domo picks up six with her meaty. Six is hands. just. On the beach, like the weasel from Suicide Squad, <laughs> 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 like just dead. <laughs> she, she, she rubs her greasy hands over Six's face. Shh, it's okay now. It's okay. <laughs> Six bites her hand. <laughs> it's just me. It's just me. Me hand. <laughs> Yummy. All right, everybody, bring it in. Bring it in. Come on. You all did a fantastic job. Go ahead, Six. No, you you go ahead. You go ahead. Is the flump okay? <laughs> uh, the flump is just like squirming inside the pot. It's like it it, it would it would thank goodness there's no real threat because it would die. It's like doing that thing where it could easily just probably float out, but instead it's like moving around with all of these dead bodies of these these jealous going on top of it like they're attacking it can, can i fish it out while candy is talking there uh yeah yeah you you like just reach in and just grab it by the tentacle and fish it out uh ah. it sees you fishing it out and it wraps its arms around you oh my hero was oh, the mvp <laughs> Oh, what would I do without you? I, I love that he counted. I love that he counted as a jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. No one else is ever a bigger fan than me. <laughs> well, Candy says, looking to each of you, I say we go ahead and head on back. Get back to the campgrounds. I will award your final badges and then the graduating ceremony will commence. Come on, y'all, she says. Yes, let's all go at once, uh, Lodger says as he turns one more time to wherever uh, Candy was looking. <gasps> <laughs> nope! Oh, you oh. love to see it. Oh, it wasn't oh, meant no. to be. That's, that's not a crit one. Uh, uh oh the two uh yeah you you see you see still nothing out there amazing uh, tally or uh sorry candy turns and begins to kind of throw a hand your way to have you each begin to head that way she takes a second and heads over to the green pot and puts like a, a lid on top of it to, to cover the contents inside and then waves a hand for you to follow as she begins to follow the same uh, 
sort of walkway pathway between the sort of the rocky outcroppings that leads back to the jungle tree line. Um, is Tally staying in her giant toad form? No. She okay. revert. Uh, Tally transforms back into her Kalishtar form, and then is Baz sticking around? Uh, Baz can disappear. Okay, Baz dissipates. Uh, let's see here. Vice Do is it. gonna invite the Flump back to camp. Oh, the, the flump is like, does not let go of you. Yeah. You scored a whole point, bro. I helped you win. <laughs> yeah. The flump is just like gently caressing his face with a tentacle. <laughs> uh. I love uh, this flump. As... 20 or so minutes pass, you all hiking through the jungles here, following the path, away from the shorelines of the beach here. You realize at some point recently the facial uh, rubbing of the flump has stopped. And as you look back, Vice, you see no longer a flump no. there. No. And your dagger has fallen to the ground. Oh. Brutal. Uh, can I collect that dart? Mm-hmm. Can I make special note that that's the lucky flump dart? <laughs> uh, you do that thing as you begin to reach the campgrounds. Camp Counselor Candy brings you all to the middle of the campgrounds. And looks to each of you and says, All right. It's time to award Team Houdini with their third badge. Appearing on <clears throat> each of your suits, Team Houdini, you see a new embroidered badge forming. This one, a image, an embroidered image of three blades touching their tips to one another. Yeah. Saucy. Oh, for the environment. <laughs> Congratulations, exactly, on winning the environment, environment badge. badge. Uh, let's see here. Candy takes a second and rubs her chin and says, You know, this is actually pretty interesting. What's that? I never we all have three? expected a tie, exactly. <gasps> what a shocking coincidence. How about that? Matter of fact, I, we all leave. I think that's the first one we've ever had here at the camp. <gasps> How about that? I suppose that means you both win. Oh, I don't know that anybody wins. I think we're all equally losers and winners. Kind of in a draw state. No, no, no. Right, no right, losers like a, here. A third state. Oh. There are two winners, and y'all both won. It's okay to have two winners. Everybody here in this instance has won. Oh. Oh, boy. Ain't that nice? I may have made a slight miscalculation with this plan, then. I don't know how we could have made a better choice otherwise. <laughs> now look. Thanks for... thanks for that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> See, this is the problem these days, these participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping <laughs> she would say that. <laughs> Everyone wins. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, as promised, since all of you are winners, through a draw, you are now finally allowed to leave the camp. You've graduated. Oh my. She runs a finger under an eye. I'm already tearing up at the thought of seeing you leave. But, hey, a good counselor knows when to let her birds fly free from the nest. So, 
Let's get you out of this camp and on to your new future life, shall we? Yes, she says yes. this, each of you hear the sounds of the jungles around you begin to shift. As several beams of light pierce through the tree line, engulfing each of you in its rays. Oh no. You all hey, are Andy. blinded by a bright yellow light. Hey, Candy. <laughs> Hang on just a second. do ask this, Harper, but hang on. The light is very bright, and it takes your eyes a second to adjust. Uh, still unable to fully see, you hear Candy say, Yes, Harper. You go to hell. Oh, well, that's not very nice. <laughs> no. okay, so what's this happening? I don't like this spotlight. I mean, I love it, but I hate it. Your eyes finally begin to adjust a little bit. Let me see here. Uh, let me move maps and I will tell you what you see. My temperature, the color temperature of this light, it's just all wrong for my complexion. As the bright light begins to wear off, your vision oh, returning no. to you, you find yourselves in a large cavernous interior filled with blue and gray rock. Beneath each of your feet, is a vile looking dark sludge that fills the cracks in the cave grounds, forming viscous pools of black in certain areas. Bioluminescent shrubbery are dotted around the cave and fills it with low light. The only entryway appears to be an old wooden door set in the rocky wall far behind you. There is a pungent odor that permeates your nostrils in here. Up ahead, several feet, you see a massive white mass surrounded by several humanoids. The white mass bears a small face in its upper center mass, similar to your hexamals, though this one wears a mouth made from cracked lips. Several sickly looking humanoids stand around in ragged clothing, each of their no noses covered by clothespins as they use what look like mops pulled from nearby buckets of water to clean various areas of the hexamal variant where the black ichor has begun to pour out of its various folds. A look of weakness and exhaustion fills their faces. Tally, you as well as Six, Vice, and Harper each see a familiar pirate face among the lot as he lets out a hacking cough, continuing to run a mop around the creature. Behind each of them, between you and them, several bipedal frog-like humanoid creatures watch from the outer perimeter, their amphibian skin various shades of yellow. Their eyes, exaggerated and large, sit on top of their heads. A strange membrane looks to cover their eyeballs as they turn to notice you. The pirate that seems familiar to you turns, realizing that you are here, and says, Oh, blimey. <coughs> they got you too? Candy turns and says, I can't remember when exactly the two of us met it. Feels like it's been so long now, but oh boy, Hattie, I tell you that our little symbiotic relationship has just been the most charming thing I've known for some time. You see, campers, this here creature works with me, as well as my little frog friends. Yes, the scary jungle creatures were also my little cadets all along. I am very sorry for the deception, but I needed you to stay within the campgrounds, and boy, I've got to say, I'm very fortunate that you mostly listened made the challenges that much more fun. 
This here entire island is my lair. And I work tirelessly to pull strangers washing up on the shore to provide them with a little exhausting camp game or two before sending the winning team down here. My brig friend over here has blessed me with a portion of its strange powers in exchange for a few things. You see, it helps me move the island around using its long tendrils and puts us in the way of unsuspecting sailors. I then use my powers to make a nasty storm brew up and when they eventually crash, I bring them to the camp and wear them down with some fun. Should any of them get the bright idea to try and trail off, I have the Blindheim here, she says, waving at the frog-like creatures, flash them with her eyes, which is connected to my blobby pal, who uses its weird power to teleport them directly here. You see, the entire point of the camp games wasn't just for show. All the lessons you learn along the way compassion, assertiveness, reciprocity, and environment are going to help you all. From here on out, you'll be grabbing yourselves a mop and bucket and helping to clean my big friend. He had to grow big enough in order to move the island around, but his size, the energy he uses to do it makes him perspire pretty hard. And none of us like to go without a nice bath for too long. Now, luckily since both of you teams won, you'll each be assigned the task of helping to clean him. Just remember, if you ever stop being useful to him, he might get a little hungry, so make sure to keep cleaning, she says. She waves a hand over nearby some of the mixture of both men and women who are in ragged clothing. Some look like pirate attire, others don't. And there's a couple other buckets and mops kind of laying around the black ichor on the dry areas of the cave floor. Well, she says, go on, get to it. Wow, she's evil. It, that's such a twist. Can, Candy, what the fuck are you? I'm Camp Counselor Candy, she says with a smile. <laughs> well, All right, this is guys. right and proper fucked. Well, we found the Hexamole. Now we just gotta kill this thing, right? Yeah. And then we're good to go. We All right. Out of here. Yo, pirates! If you want to live, I'd recommend skedaddling. They turn and hear what you say, but some of them are wary in the face and others sort of look on. They understand what you've said, but don't initially move. They sort of like wait to watch what you do. Oh, uh, we're, I mean, I mean, we're, 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 we're doing this, right? We're yeah. throwing down. Shit, yeah. I was gonna say, if we need a inspiring action, Lodger tries to gross, split candy in half. <laughs> in the hotel room, right? The same one you in and the Lodger. hotel room where we destroyed all those speakers. I will say, if that's the case, you can go candy. first, and then everyone, please roll me initiative. Uh, I guess Ooh. I don't have to roll twice because it already does advantage for me. So I'll just take oh, yeah, the first roll. Huh. That's still pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah, incredibly good. Oh, I'll take that 20 for show. Oh, Mr. zero, Musa. So you so slow. Oh, I got to roll for tail. Is this a uh, difficult terrain or anything? Um, the black squares are difficult terrain, yes. No, 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 I take it back. No, they're not. No difficult terrain here. Okay. Uh, Musa? Did you punch in your initiative? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Musa. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I don't think That's... Vice did, though. Nick. Yeah, Vice. Oh, I thought I typed in 10. Did it not? You didn't type it in hard enough. <laughs> Harder. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. 
And then on my end, let me just do some of these. Hang on a second. Alright, that's that. Oh no. It's gonna be this. And they're gonna do that. And then here we go. This is gonna be that one. here all right lodger you're up first oh, watch me as my opening phrase uh is gonna be one attack for me and then that sucks and then uh baz will appear and he'll make an attack uh, that sucks. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> then I will action surge, and for the same. God damn it! Oh. Are you oh, kidding me? No. Oh no. There okay. Oh, there's one of four. Mm -hmm. uh, Eighteen, and then I'm gonna use uh, the thing that makes Baz get an extra attack this turn. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah. Does eighteen nice. hit? An eighteen does not hit. Does a 19 hit? A 19 hits. It does a 13 slashing damage, and her speed is slowed by 10. And I think that's all that I got. Let me just double check here. Features. Uh, that's not the right place for that. Uh, I, I think that's it. Um, her speed's reduced by 10 and 13 slash damage. For As five you attacks. strike candy. <laughs> You watch behind you as the entire area begins to quake as the large, massive hexamal variant screeches aloud. As you strike her with what, your axe? Uh, Baz's axe, yeah. Uh, as you strike her with Baz's axe, your axe, or well, Baz's axe is like the incorporeal thing, right? Yeah. Okay, but it just, it still does like damage. Correct. Gotcha, it's gotcha. A, it's, a, it's a copy of whatever I'm attacking with. Gotcha. Uh, as you strike, Candy remains motionless, the ground quaking around, and she looks over and says, Now, that's not something I would suggest y'all do. That's not what we practice in the trials. You're supposed to be caring for the hexamal variant. For the what now? You're just going to make them upset by doing that, honey. What you call it? The creature. A you hexamal. Do, you do a whole time what we were here for. Oh, I have no idea what you're here for other than to play games with me. Oh. But you called it the hexamal. That's what we call it. Well, that's the name it was given. It seemed obtuse. I figured the masterminds made it up for themselves. I don't know. Who's a maester mind? <laughs> What's a hexable? Six, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Just casually conversing, his axe biting in her <laughs> neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sticking out of your forehead. What do you mean? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I should have been measuring this. Um. Need a Baz duplicate, too. Oh, yeah. Six is going to use her movement to run up to one of these frog creatures. As you get within 15 feet of it, they loosen the membranes on their eyes and a blasting light shoots out. You have disadvantage on attack rolls this close. Well, then, when she gets within 15 feet of it, she's going to just take a step back. Okay. So she's not within 15 feet. Good idea. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah. you notice okay. that as you step sure. into that square sure. and then yeah. take a step back. 
And she's gonna take... Oh, well, first she's gonna rage. So... Let me get to this wild surge table. Uh, five. So... When a creature hits me with an attack roll before my rage ends, that creature takes 1d6 force damage. Nice. As magic lashes out in ret retribution. Very cool. Damage Very shield. Cool. Nash. Okay. She's going to take a hand axe and she is going to throw it at the frog. Mm hmm. Nice. 18. 18 hit. hits. Good tactics. Come on, D&D &D Beyond. All right. That is going to be 9 plus 2 from Rage, 11 slashing. All right. Uh, it stabs into the side of the creature. <clears throat> it pulls back as the hand axe strikes into it. And she's going to take out her other hand axe and throw it at him again. Yeah. Six. I'm going to add a plus 1 to that, 17. Uh, that hits. I feel like these guys have a high AC for some reason. And that's going to be eight slashing. Nice. Another axe dives into the shoulder of the creature. <coughs> it pulls back, throwing a webbed hand up to try and clutch at the hand axe as it catches into its shoulder. Anything else? Um, that's action, bonus action. No. That's it. All right. Domo, you are up. Well, these frog guys have 15 feet of blinding light around them. That's the deal. Uh, you see, yeah, the membranes have removed from their eyes. And now you get the feeling these bright lights you've heard about coming from the creatures as their eyes light up. All right. Uh, Domo knocks an arrow and is going to fire it at uh, this guy up here, actually. She's got to try to trip him with the trip attack if this, ha if this hits. Um, yeah. Uh, 19. <clears throat> Hits. Uh, it's going to be uh, 15 piercing damage, magical. Mm hmm. And uh, I'm going to do a trip attack. Uh, oh, so nice. I, I aim for his dumb frog legs. He's got a. <laughs> oh, wow. That, it's 23 in damage instead of 15. Oh, nice. Uh, and he's got to make a DC 15 strength save. Uh, DC 15 strength save. It fails. Ooh, it falls prone. Falls prone. Yep. I just knock its dumb frog legs out from under it. Um, and from my bonus action, I, I address the group and say, All right, team, you know what to do. Remember everything we learned and beat the shit out of Camp Counselor Candy. And I'm going to take the help action as a bonus action with um, my Fey gift that I can do three times a day. So the next person that attacks Candy has advantage, and we both get temporary hit. All right. So uh, <clears throat> I'll keep track of that. And after that, I'm just going to move, and I think that's going to be it for me. The frog-like creature pulls itself up from where it had fallen from your strike, Domo, and opens its large eyes wide. A bright flashing light begins to fill the area here. With its radiant eyes, it projects a bright light and a 60-foot comb uh, dim light further than that, another 60 feet, but that doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. All creatures that can see the Blindheim have disadvantage on attack rolls while in the area of bright light and within 15 feet of it. Mm. Creatures with sunlight sensitivity that can see the Blindheim have disadvantage on attack rolls anywhere in the area of the bright light. Oh no. That's our buddy Nasher. Uh, that's all that this thing does. 
uh, flash. There is a blindingly bright light that reminds you of sunlight as it kind of bakes you. Uh, all right, I think we all got off on the right, on the wrong foot. That is, let's uh, slow things down a minute. And drop the beat. He's gonna cast slow, and it is a forty foot cube. Hmm. He, he may not do that depending on how far apart these things are. Oh, yeah. That sucks. Uh, he'll, he'll cast slow, targeting the big guy and then the two frogs on the left. Okay. Uh, um, I, I will link it. It's a DC 15 wisdom save. Okay, so we'll do big boy first. Wisdom save. Uh, the large hexamol variant succeeds. And the we'll just we'll just call him Blindheim since Candy already mentioned that. Uh, the top one fails, but the bottom one succeeds. Okay, so one one is slow. So far left one is slowed. Put a snail icon yeah, on um, that. One. And Flash is going to fade back and yell at the pirate guys again to get out of there now that they can see that we're at least fighting. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Flash moves over here. And that's it for him. Uh, you watch as the hexamol variant screeches, the whole cavern shaking, uh, pieces of rubble falling from the ceiling. It forms up on the center of its chest a mound of this white viscosity and fires it out towards Six. Uh, Six, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Ooh. Danger Danger sense. sense. I get advantage. Ooh, good thing I get advantage. Uh, Does 13 fail? You want to add a plus one to that? Oh, I had a plus one. I got a few. 14 fail. 14 fails. Okay, hold on. Lucky footwork. Roll a d4. Right, rabbits get extra deck safes. 15. 15. Does a 15 fail? 15. Just makes it. Yeah. Rabbits! Dude, rabbits are good. I want to be a rabbit now, man. Uh, really you are. pop up off the ground as this uh, lobbed form of this, this white hexamal sentient goo slaps down underneath you, barely missing you. So you and jump out of the a, way. Was it at, that an attack? Uh, it was. They take 1d6 force damage and retribution. All right. Nice. Two force damage. <laughs> Uh, the creature screeches as this happens. Um, it shifts and turns, and the ground begins to rumble around you, Domo, as a pseudopod adjacent to you pushes through the rubble, shooting out, and attempts to strike you. Oi, rude. Uh, this is going to be uh, 16 versus AC. Uh, 16 just hits. The pseudopod smashes into you for 27 bludgeoning damage. Oh, God, that's a lot. I'm bloodied. Okay. Well, then. The Wait, creature... what just hit him? Just a, a tentacle came out of the ground and hit me. A white oh, okay, tentacle, okay. likely from the creature. Okay. Uh, next to you, Six, a pseudopod shoots out and attempts to hit you for nine versus AC. That does not hit. Finally. And that's an attack roll. So it is an get attack 1D6 roll. So they get 1d6 of retribution. That's a four force damage. Nice. It screeches so cool. again. This is how we win. <laughs> um, it forms one more pseudopod down next to Candy, right next to you. 
um, Harper for 16 versus AC. The pseudopod whips and then you shift out of the way as it quickly pulls back into the ground. Oh, I saw you coming. I had my shield. Uh, with that, it is done. Um, the Blindheim on the far right pulls back the membrane on its eyes and flashes a bright light ahead. Vice, you're up. All right. Oh, that kind of scrubbed that plan. All right. Uh, I'm going to try and go after one of these Blindheims. Get these out of the way for us. Um, yeah, that position will work. And uh, I'm going to try to assault this with two unarmed attacks. The light from its eyes is very bright here, so disadvantage on attack. Uh, I'd like to use one uh, card from chat to get advantage on this attack roll to make it normal. All right. A straight roll then. Uh, 26. Ooh. 26 okay. hits. Okay. For six bludgeoning damage. All right, you strike it for six points of bludgeoning damage. Um, <clears throat> already damaged previously, the creature nearly buckles over, but is able to hold its position. Okay, uh, second unarmed strike at disadvantage. A hard Terrible. miss from the bright lights that kind of pierce in your eyes. They remind you of the the these sets that you've done before with all the bright lighting. You kind of miss your hit. And uh, let's see here. It's according to Jason. <laughs> um, give me a D25, D3 roll, please. He probably missed his earlier question. Oh, let me see. Does all rewards claimed for the stream check again the next stream mean that people can no longer receive inspiration? Uh, probably yes. If it's giving you the max, then that's probably the max I've set, just so that people don't spam too much inspiration. I may, I may, I may play with that, but for now, yes. Uh, let's see. Okay, sorry. Uh, you go up to seven on your weird pressure, and with a D twenty-five. Let's see here. This is the the base base one here. Um, for whatever reason, Vice, you feel as though you could discern which spells a magic user has memorized by touching them. Me. Okay. Um. Uh, uh. Can I? I don't like those pseudopod things. Can I then use my key point to take dodge as a bonus action and end my turn? Sure. All right, done. Uh, in between your turn and the others, Musa, Flash, Tally, you feel your suits begin to tremble as the large Hexamo variant pulls in and screeches aloud. I need you each to please make me a constitution saving throw. Did you say Flash as well? Uh, Musa, Tally, and Flash, yeah. Okay. Oh, not bad. Flash, oh. not bad. I'm going to use Tully's inspiration on this. Con saves are never good. Sure. I'm going to use inspiration as well. All right. Okay. 
Nice. Nice. Well, all my suit actions happen at least, though. I think, or one of them, at least. Uh, Musa, nothing happens. Domo, nothing happens. What was your total, Lodger? Tally's was 12. Oh, this is for Tally, gotcha. Uh, Tally, you feel your suit begin to almost retro or uh, activate from some strange pressure exuded from the large hexamal variant. Tally gains an extra 1d3 to her weird pressure as her suit tightens. Ooh. And she also gains one level of exhaustion. Ooh. Oh, that's bad. That's uh, not nice. Tally's weird pressure goes to nine. Takes one point of exhaustion. Um, after Vice, it is the other two Blindheim's turns. They each take a turn and begin to flip on the bright lights. That's uh, a lot of light. That's a lot of light. Uh, that's going to be it for them. Uh, Tally, you are up. two seconds here well because that kind of changes my plans all this stuff that I, I don't know what she does what does what does, what does tell me do ice knife got some good spells yeah. yeah tidal wave wouldn't be so bad that's kind of what i was thinking try and get some splash damage down um what did i saw she said ice storm she has ice storm. Is that the one that hangs around? Yeah. But I think it just makes it difficult rain. I don't know if it actually does damage. Or if that's snowball storm that does damage. There's Hail There's two different half as much of success. Hail Oh no, it does damage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Um Yeah, Tali's going to summon an ice storm upon Yonder Boogan, which is going to capture all of these guys on the left. Okay. I'll and kill two it, of the pirates. That it keeps, that it hits about half of him and then extends about there. So did it hit, hit this one up here? What's that? Does it hit this this person up here are you pinging it's something i don't see pinging. uh let me do this here yeah there okay. could be 40 feet both directions so this one this one will be spared by the corner but otherwise everybody in that size that's that's the the pirate you recognize this one is mm-hmm okay. it, 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 it's gonna be a Token that I could put a 40, because like 40 radius is enough to show. Um, you know what I mean? For you talking about like a circle or something? Yeah, just like a, because it's 40 foot, or it's a 20 foot diameter. You just or, just yeah. make a baz with with 20 feet of aura that we can see coming out of it. Yeah. Okay, here, here, take this. Well, that works. 40 feet. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and then what you want, like right, nice. right here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. It only kills one of the pirates. Wait. Huzzah! Alright. Each creature in the cylinder must make a dexterity save, DC 14, uh, dexterity save. Uh, takes 2d8 bludgeoning. 46 cold failed save half as much on a success what's the dc 14 decks um, the slowed one uh has a minus two to deck saves for being slowed okay uh both of the frogs pass somehow the human passes as well what about the big guy the hex? uh oh yeah big big boy Big boy does not pass. 
Hey. Um, so he will. I'll do this one first because that'd be full damage. Two D eight plus four D six. So Big Boogan gets twenty one. Um, it is a mix of cold and bludgeoning, which matters to you. Uh, neither of those matter to me. Sweet, I like it. And then half of this for the other two, or for the other three guys. Okay. Ten on the other. Nice. <laughs> nice and even. You watch as ice shards begin to kick up and whip around, dealing damage to each of the creatures within the field, whether they saved or not. Uh, the area is difficult to rain until the end of my next turn. Uh, okay, hang on just a second here. And she would have moved. Ice side. shards. You say those who pass take 10, is that it? Uh, yeah. Half of the point. So these three okay. saved for 10, and then big blob for 21. Uh, you watch as one of the f female looking people covered in pirate garb screeches as a shard of ice just pelts into her form and she collapses on the ground dead. We told you to run, you idiots! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just. Oh. Don't tell Moz this happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and that'll, that'll be it. All right. Uh, tally is done, which means finally the prisoners can move. What do you know? <laughs> they just had to wait one turn to go. Uh, they begin running. Five, Ripperonies. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They are exhausted, so they cannot double move. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then this one's seeing the ice cloud that just murdered what is likely one of their crewmates. 5, 10, 15, 20, Go 25, around. 30. Go around. She begins screeches and yelling, <clears throat> throwing down the mop and just running full force. Uh, Musa, you're up. Finally. All right. Well, actually. The first thing I need to do always is just cast Mage Armor on myself. Good idea. Um, since I did use a level one spell of higher that can activate my wild magic surge. So let's just see if it's a one. Nope. Nothing happens. Um, I will now just move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty. Yeah, I'm good here. All right. Anything else, Musa? <clears throat> nope. All right. Uh, let's see here. We roll back up to the top. Before you go, Lodger, a tentacle shoots out of the ground next to you, Six, and attempts to whip at you for 20 versus AC. Jesus. 20 hit AC. Does it? Six. Hey, sorry. Um, 20 does hit AC, yes. Uh, it smashes go. into you for 24 bludgeoning damage. Except she's as fucking raging! Ah. Quickly as it's shot up, it pulls back down. That is um, technically from the large creature. Let me do this math real quick for my HP. So that's 12 damage. And they take 1d6. That's 3. So right. good. Continuing so to do damage to them. Um, uh, then Lodger is up. Uh, word. I was just typing in the ice storm for. I saw somebody measure into it. Is just difficult terrain. It's not going to damage you anymore. Um, 
All right. Lodger has... Lodger does need sight, baby. He's he's moved by sound, the vibrations, the primordial movement of the universe. I have blind fighting and do not suffer disadvantage. Ooh. You just... So you just get straight-up advantage because I took the help action on Candy. Oh! Well, hello. Say goodbye. I hope this doesn't crit because I might die! Buna, 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 buna. <laughs> hey. It's soft crit because I have the uh, wef- I have the uh, suit feet that makes this crit on an 18. You beautiful bastard. Beautiful bastard. It also takes an additional d4 force damage. Hey, you and for following me. for following Domo's order, we both get four temporary hit points. That did not roll correctly. Me. Yeah. So uh, the attack, uh, which was a twenty-four to hit, does twenty-two damage. Okay. Um, is that oh, your attack, Lodger? Uh, that is my attack. Yeah. Uh, you strike hard into Candy, and as you do, Candy doesn't seem to be affected at all. But the large hexamol variant <gasps> screeches. You watch as you strike into her with your axe. Your axe disappears and reappears in front of the hexamol variant. Oh, Ooh. you saucy bitch. I oh, tried shit. warning you, she says. You just wouldn't listen. Uh, hmm. Also, that was, uh, you can add one point of HP, six, because that was 11, not 12 damage, because it was 22 cut in half. Oh, Should've... I thought you said 24. No. Okay. Should have done this in a different order, but I'll continue my attack. Uh, switching to the smaller X. This is from Baz for 15 to hit. I'll make it 16. I got a bunch of shit. Uh, that does not hit. Those, and then I'll point at her, and I will say, you. You like to play games, and I had a better rhyme than this before, but I forgot it, so I'm just gonna hex. <laughs> um, but da, 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 da. The attack with this. I'm sorry, but my macro would have this on. Does it look like whatever we're doing to her is affecting the hexamol, though? Uh, it seems as though each time you strike her, she does not uh, seem to flinch or anything and instead the hexamol variant screeches uh, okay so cool. I point at the blobulus then and it just so hex just happens huh? it's no, there's no save for it correct sweet so it is hexed and uh, I get some stuff it doesn't get some stuff it bad like, takes off alright three uh, are these friendly? Can I move? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, they're they are, pirates. They are terrified of you and just trying to run, <laughs> seeing as you have murdered one of them. Lodger <laughs> slides around Camp Counselor. Uh, did you uh, Did you add your four temporary hit points? I did not. Thank you for a moment. Is it temporary or...? It's temporary hit points, yes. Sweet. Candy uh, taps you on the shoulder as you run by Lodger and says, there's some buckets over there. You can grab a mop. <laughs> you can grab a mop. I'm going to grab. Grab a bucket. And you're, mop. you're dead. I'm going to win. <laughs> Very good, Lodger. <laughs> All right. Uh, six, you're up. <laughs> okay. So, six is going to this thing has been damaged right yes i damaged it looking pretty bad actually okay perfect. from what you can see out of its silhouette from the blinding light in the area she's going to point at it and just let out a guttural little rabbit scream and as a bonus action is going to cast true strike with her thwarting hat. Yes. Um, and then she's going to grab her war hammer and she's going to run up to it. Uh, As you step within 
the 15 feet space, its held action goes off, a radiant energy erupts from its eyes, and a 15 foot cone that would only hit you. I need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please. You got Ew. this. I'm gonna add a one, 15. All right, uh, that does pass. Uh, you throw your arm up just to the last minute so that this flash doesn't affect you. And she's going to run up to it and try to hit it and she has disadvantage. Hold on. <laughs> The blinding radiant light from their eyes just in this cacophony ray of, of, of overlap the volume makes it difficult as you swing and miss. And she's going to try to hit it again. Okay. Hold on. 22. 22 Who will hit. advantage? Fuck it up. That is eight bludgeoning plus two because she's raging. Uh, how do you kill this thing? Nice. I'm just going to like smash it in the head so that its eyes like <laughs> pop out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. All right, it is dead. Nice. Anything else? Six. Um. Nope, I already used my bonus action, so nope, I'm good. All right, Domo. Uh, Domo's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, and is going to second wind. Not Probably very exciting, idea. but necessary. Probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to jinx you, but I was gonna say tiny wind. I mean, it's it's been, it's been. <laughs> it's wow. been. Hold on, fucking god damn it! Roll the boy, not Kevin. Story you say of my life. You say mommy, um, Kevin. But no, it's been one week. <laughs> it's been one week. Uh, I'm just, I'm gonna just take a long shot at this one over here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna spend. Uh, one of my advantages, which is a choose two, mm. which is uh, I'll get advantage on my shot, but also I'm going to recover 2d6. Nice. A incredibly middling roll for a turn that's hopefully about to turn around right now when I crit this thing. I mean, huh? I'll take it. High I'll, roll I'll that hits. It. Yeah. Oh. And and uh i'm gonna hey six what's your speed uh 40. oh perfect um six i am going to do a maneuvering attack so my shot is going to give you an opportunity to move your speed wherever you want like right now yeah like right now damn okay yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. It's only half your speed. Never mind. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to wait okay. for a better opportunity. Instead, I'm just going to trip attack this guy again. Sorry, everybody. Trip attack plus an additional six damage. So he took 19 altogether. Mm -hmm, he has to make mm -hmm. a strength save or fall. Okay. Uh, strength save is a... What's the DC? 15. Fails. Trips and falls. Oh. All right, he's he's prone. I've I've got two good boy points left, and I end my turn. All right, uh, this one has tripped and fallen prone. With that one, it is the one next to Vice's turn. Vice, a bright flash pierces your eyes as it uses its radiant blast against you. Um, I don't think this affects Baz because Baz is like a weird ethereal thing it doesn't really have eyeballs uh so flash or uh sorry vice i need you to make a constitution saving throw please all right i'm gonna use lucky if it doesn't work con save go 
<laughs> lucky go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> point, point of lucky with a plus one go. No, no. Oh my god. Well, I can choose. I was gonna say, is lucky choose which? What, what, lucky, what, what, what lucky chooses. Nice. <laughs> Lucky like chooses, I could choose which die to use. God, we so all I'll, just had dookie rolls this session. I'll, for I'll use the eight. All right. Uh, <clears throat> eight. Uh, it's going to put me at eight. Oh. Uh, the bright flash of the radiant blast from the creature's eyes has uh, hit your own eyes. Let's see here. Uh, you take... Uh, six points of radiant damage, and you are blinded until the end of the creature's next turn. Uh, the creature then begins to move. I mean, that, uh, it just prevents opportunity attacks five, for you. You're already at disadvantage to hit everything. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and it's going to just reorient its own little beam here to kind of catch right here. Uh, it is done. Flash is up. <clears throat> All right, baby. Time for a little shake and bake. Fireball right here. Oh, no. In, in just such a way that it, it doesn't hit the pirate, which okay. is it's it's radius 20, so it can it can do that. Um, OK, fireball. Um, you know what? He's going to spend his level four spell slot on this, and he's 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 gonna he's gonna do it. They all have to make a uh, one of them their DC fifteen deck saves. Uh, big boy, I'm assuming is caught in the blast. Yes, fails. Uh, we'll say the the top. Blindheim next to it fails. The one that was fallen prone succeeds. It flash blows the Somehow. smoke from his fingers. It's going to be 33 fire damage. Half on a success. So 16 on a, on a success. Let's see. That is going to be this and this. Okay. You watch as a huge portion of the large hexamol variant is singed by the blast that erupts catching some mops and buckets with it uh as the blast finishes you watch as the blindheim that ran from vice is just yeah. completely immolated and actually this one too is also dead bada bing fireball nice. got the hot new beats for you everyone right and uh, Flash is gonna is gonna move up one, two, three, four, and five and six, All right. and he's done. All right, it is the Hexamol variant's turn. He can he can skip. We we don't have to do his turn. Uh, with a loud screech, it begins to well up a hardened portion of its milky white form, and fires it off at. Musa, I need you to make me a <laughs> a uh, let me see here uh, oh, well, dex saving throw dex dude no. destroy the child oh. um, destroy the how child. about we use a uh, inspiration card probably a good idea couldn't okay. hurt just for the advantage. I may um do I have to call using a plus one now? I forget. I will. You know yes, what? Please. I'm just going to You can you can see the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason as long as I don't tell you. It, yeah. Okay. Alright. So deck save with advantage. Mm, oh, boom, oh. Can you add a plus one? Yeah, I'm gonna add a plus one. Oh, I, I mean, we know that doesn't succeed. We we heard the math before. So that puts me at 14. And then can I bend luck on myself? Oh. Mm, no, know. when another creature you can see. <sighs> oh, man. That sucks. 
Pretend you're having an identity crisis. <laughs> when that, um, can I take back the plus one? Because I know it doesn't help. Yes, keep oh, the plus it's... one. As okay. the voluminous, hardened portion of its form smashes into you for 20 points of acid damage. Ouch. Uh, as that finishes happening, next to you, Vice, a huge pseudopod shoots out of the ground and attempts to whip at you for 12 versus AC. It has uh, advantage because he's blind right now. Oh, yes, but it does I have, have advantage. Dodge action. You do have dodge oh. action, so that's a straight roll. Cancels out. Cancels out. Uh, misses at 12. All right. Oh, Another one shoots out of the ground and attempts to hit you for 21 versus AC. 21 will hit, yeah. Yeah. All right, this one strikes you for 21 points of bludgeoning damage. Ouch. One more final pseudopod shoots out for 18 versus AC against you, Vice. Ooh, I got 17 AC. All right, this one now hits for 26 points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. 26 26 that uh that temp hp from my hp aug saved me oh thanks hey hp aug never leave home without it you need his what you nearly collapse back from just the trio of pseudopods that shoot from the ground and smash into your form your eyes go fuzzy for just a second but you can feel your suit tighten the temp hp from the suit keeping you stabilized uh, with that, Vice, it is your turn. Potions are actions or bonus actions? Uh, actions in my game. Okay. So... We're going to risk it for the biscuit. Yes. Probably not a bad idea. I killed today. I can only heal now. I killed yeah. a friend. I'll heal you. This guy would have run. And I'm going glass cannon on the hexamol it screeches I only as have, you near it i i am on death's door <laughs> uh first attack 24 nice. hits six bludgeon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. second attack uh i'm sorry before i do that second attack Picking two, I want advantage and I want an extra bonus action if I'm allowed to do my second punch as a bonus action and get two second punches. Perfect. Sure. I, think so. I don't think there's a rule against that. Sure. Hey, on arm strike, this is a second <coughs> hole attack. Add advantage. Nice. 21 yeah. versus AC. Hits. Good strikes. By seven. I'm fucking taking you down, little <laughs> motherfucker. This is First for you, bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> No. This is for the fluff. First, first bonus action, unarmed strike, add plus one, please. All right. 21. Hits. That's a six. Second one. Holy shit. It never ends. 21 versus AC. Hits. Fucking masterful. Eight bludgeon. The creature screeches point, in pain. Key point for flurry of blows. Oh, yes. All right. Oh, yes. Monks. Uh, uh, as a point of order, the flurry of blows would have had to take your second martial arts attack, so you just get one more additional. Thank you. One additional. Oh, nice. 27. What, what a good fucking end to the turn, even with Hits. the wild search. I mean, five uh, out of five. Before you do your damage, let me get that D3, D25. Just in case anything yes. affects it. Fucking champion. Because you are a little high at eight. Oh, the magical oh, 15. Oh, don't forget to check your suits if you have one that... My, my suit is going to give me... The Everybody. healing aug is going to give me hit points equal to one of my hit die, and I'm going to get an extra HP potion. And then, uh, I love it. 
that. What does my hit die? Yeah. Ten. Monk? Yeah, eight. I think, I think they're D8s. I'm going to say monk is an eight, I think. Take an eight. Your attack does hit Vice, although the world seems to shift up as you find yourself buried in the ground from the waist down. You have a speed of zero and a need to use an action to unbury yourself if you want to be oh, able to move again. No. Mm. Well, at least you're already buried. Saves on funeral fees. Right? <laughs> Still in range. <laughs> and then what was the damage from the hit? Let's see. Uh, Five and three is eight. Okay, thank you. Strong stuff. 45 damage from a deadly flurry of fists. It's like punching the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, anything else, Vice? Um, no, that's, uh, that is all that I can do. Good turn. Uh, before the blind hind goes, with a legendary action, the creature next to you lets loose a screech and throws a pseudopod just out of its large form itself your way for an 18 versus AC. To Vice? Yes. That's going to hit. That is then going to be, since you're close to it and attacking it, uh, 19 points of bludgeoning damage. He will be downed. Mm. You see the pseudopod come out, Vice, but buried waist in this black viscous goo, you're smashed in the face and Oops. things go black. Ignore that. That, that. that was nothing. Ignore that. It was a misclick. <laughs> Uh, that's it. The Blindheim is going to go now. Um, it is going to move five, ten, right? That's here. difficult terrain, I think, by the way. Correct. No, yeah, five, oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, it five, is ten, terrain, fifteen, yeah. twenty. Oh, yeah. And let me see here. Uh, it lets loose a blinding flash of light your way, six. Please give me a Constitution saving throw. I think. Hang, hang on. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Uh, na, 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 na. Yes, con saving throw. Eleven. Oh, what's its uh, what's its total speed, Jason? Sorry, it's slowed right now. Just as a reminder. Oh, what it, does that? It has half speed right now. Half speed. Okay, so then it could technically only move right here. Because what, that makes every space. And... Nice. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What is that? Is uh, 15 feet like every space, is that it? I I suppose so. It would be like it has 15 move speed and every space still costs 10 move speed. To okay, so it could only move one, meaning yeah. it cannot get in range of U6. So with, with that said, nice. it is actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, with that knowledge, it's gonna stay where it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it, it doesn't try to flash you six. Good, good reminding me. Thank you. Um, because it is slow. That's correct. Um, hold actions with slow. Still do that. It it uh, it gets no reactions. It does get to save at the end of his turn. Okay. Um, yeah. On his turn, it can either use an action or a bonus action, not both. It can't make more than one melee or range attack per turn. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, and can't use reactions. Yeah. Uh, it wants to, to make a, a make a save. That's a uh, eighteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it succeeds. It is no longer slow. Okay, so it could not prepare an action, but it is no longer slowed. Um, it is done. Tally is up. I don't know how I missed this the first time. Um, Tally looks to the heavens and calls down a <gasps> Moonbeam! <laughs> the classic <laughs> Right on Counts of Candy. <laughs> oh, 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 I see what you're doing. I know, I see your game. Six and she moves beyond her that way. Uh, the uh, do, 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 do is a 14 con save for the moonbeam on candy. And I say candy. 
Uh, 14 con save. Yes. Uh, yes, makes it. Makes it. Takes makes half it. It, uh, it. Oh, sorry. A shape changer makes the saving throws with disadvantage. Mm, still makes it. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Um, it takes half of the uh, roll damage for four. Four damage. Uh, the large hexamal screeches as Candy looks around, engulfed in a moon beam of light. Oh, uh, sorry. That's not very nice. Uh, Tally looks at Flash and says, I'm not going to be able to make a device. Can you help him? Hey, you can count on me. I'm great. Don't give him CPR. Um, Flash and that cast will, fireball. That will be it. <laughs> All right. Oh, in his misery. That will be it for Dally. Five, hey, you, you should uh, you should draw that moonbeam though, because it's persistent. Like, for example, they would see a giant laser there and probably want to move yeah. around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, guys, it's the way out. I see the light. Oh, actually, Walk into the light. <laughs> you can can you shrink the uh, ice effect down to one square because it disappears at the same time. It was only through the end of my next turn, which would oh, be when okay. the moonbeam becomes active. Moonbeam. Uh, yes. Then just on candy. To one square? Yep. Yeah, it's just one square. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you can you can move it around like the Hammer of Dawn and Gears yeah. of War. We'll do this to the front then. That way she's underneath it. Moonbeam. All right. Anything else tally? <laughs> I feel whole again. I got to play a druid, and I got to cast Moonbeam, and I got to call <laughs> somebody as a frog. <laughs> Everyone loves Moonbeam. Moonbeam! The That'd be it. exhausted prisoners continue to try and push towards the wooden door out at the back of the cavernous area. Musa, you are up. All right. Yes. Okay. Gonna move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I am going to point at the hexamal and casting at. What? Well, point at the. It doesn't matter. Casting at third level Tasha's Mind Whip. So it can affect the frog and the hexamal because they're within 30 feet. Okay. Oh, that's such a good spell. So they have to make a uh, DC intelligence. Interesting. Don't get to roll intelligence a lot. Okay. Uh, what's the DC? Uh, 15. Oh, intelligence boy. saving throw. Uh, both fail. Excellent. Nice. They take 15 points of psychic damage, and on both of their next turns, they must choose whether to move, do an action, or a bonus action. Only one of the three. Okay. Nice. I'm assuming rules lawyers that doesn't affect legendary actions. It does not affect legendary actions. Okay, no. just wanted to make sure. All right. Uh, I was just trying to get a hit less. <laughs> no, no, good idea, good idea. You've done good. You've done good. <laughs> and I got to hit both of them. All right. Anything All right. else, Musa? Uh, I moved. I took an action. I'm good. Uh, seeing you do this, Musa, the large hexamal variant screeches. You hear the rumbling sound next to you as the pseudopod shoots out, attempting to hit you for 13 versus AC. Uh, uh, damn it, just, just hits. Oh, you're hit. so, you're such a small human child. Just a little girl. Uh, hit you for 17 points of bludgeoning damage. That S hurt. Squishy and filled with blood and organs. I am at 14 HP. Everything hurts, ev guys. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
She's dead. <laughs> Hang on just a second. <laughs> Counselor Candy looks at you, Harper, and says, This might be getting a little out of hand. Why don't you help me out some, Harper? You help me oh, out no. some. Oh no. I need you to please make me a wisdom saving throw. As her dying. eyes no, flash. No. Oh god. Oh god, where's that button? What's the hang out? Uh, I'm gonna add plus one. Yeah. Sure. Oh, ooh, ooh. Pretty good. Thirteen, not good. Um, I'm gonna bend luck on him. Use oh. two uh, sorcery points. Add three. Uh, that'll be a Jesus. I suddenly cease the ability to math. Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> you feel some form of beguiling power begin to overtake you, but just with the bin luck are able to overcome it. Uh, um, hold on. If it was a charmed effect, I had an advantage on it naturally. Oh um, yes, then then you could roll okay. again. Y either way, you succeed. Uh, well, I want to save Kevin's resources if that's... Sure, yeah, go ahead and roll it. Uh, was bang. Forget uh, about no. these <laughs> meta rules. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> hey, ben luck, work. Luck. I'm down. I, I, I love think that the first luck. time I've had it work. Nice. Mm. Like, um, <laughs> Candy's just going to hang out I told there. you, I hate you. That's still not, not very you. nice. I've been trying to I'm teach you this not, whole time. You're not nice. You're just doing things politely. That's not making you nice. That's a good point. Hey, he's mm -hmm. got a point. You're kind of a bitch, but thanks for the lessons. You well, that's not very other. nice either. She you says. abducted us. Those aren't nice things. A huge pseudopod shoots out and attempts to hit you, Lodger. Oh. <laughs> uh, 21 versus AC. Yeah. Can't help you anymore. Oh, wait, uh, what's what's half cover give you? Is that what it is? It's yeah, advantage. half cover. It's it plus two AC, right? Or no? No, it gives yeah. them disadvantage, I think. Hang on. Right? I thought half cover was just plus two. Half it's cover AC, five. I think you're right. It's plus two to AC. From? Oh, okay. From the weird two. effect. Yeah. Uh, oh. Plus two makes me twenty, which uh, twenty-one beats. All right. Oh. You end up taking 19 points of bludgeoning damage as a pseudopod smashes into you. Uh, but you're up. Your butt up. Uh, I am going to make the excellent play, which is to say, switch places with Baz. And we... For effect, but not actually. Lodger is the source of this. Both launch a uh, pyro at the uh, remaining guy. Sure. Which is a um, Eldritch Blast. I have two bolts. I'm just. It's fancy. They're doing different things. Uh, 19 to hit. I imagine the eight misses. Um, this is within the light of the Blindheim, so this is technically uh, Ledger, a disadvantage. Well, just blind sight. Uh, well, I would have done that before I switched places with him. It's 120 foot range. Wait, what? You it's also not within. It's not within 15 feet of the thing, either. Still, well, it's it's radiant eyes yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, I it, I would have just done it before I switched. Done what? And it's a 120 foot distance on Eldritch Blast. Blind sight? Uh, it doesn't, it, it has to be next to him. Wait, I'm sorry, what? What are you saying? I'm confused. What happened? I, I'm from here. I am launching Eldritch Blast on this thing okay. from Lodger's position. But within the area of this bright light, which is this, this cone here, would be disadvantage. But he's not within it. He's outside the cone. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought you were doing it as Baz in the cone. Sorry, I didn't see you switch. No, you good. Okay. 
that's what I said. It's for for flavor. They're both doing it, but gotcha, gotcha, the source of it gotcha. I I misunderstood. For game mechanics terms. Nineteen hits. Um, Nineteen does ten force damage. It falls over dead. Yes, good, good, good. Nice. And then let's place switch places, and that is all of my actions, and then I can bonus action summon Baz right there. Ow. All right. Anything that, else, Lodger? That is it. I Six. I look longingly at Vice. No. Going to grab her hand axes from this dead frog. I assume that doesn't cost anything. Uh, no. Free action, just picking up a weapon. Okay, cool. And she is going to run over to this big thing right over there um question one of my cards lets you immediately deal 2d6 cold damage to a creature you can see Mm -hmm. will that cost an action or anything or is it just free no if it's an inspiration card it just happens okay cool well then i'm gonna use that and do 2d6 cold damage to the hexamol. All right. Nice. It's going to be six. You watch a portion of its form begin to coalesce into like an icy bit before breaking off as a creature screeches. She is also, as a bonus action, going to cast um, True Strike again against the hexamol. So good. So good. So good. And then she's going to take our Warhammer and swing it at him. 25 yeah, to hit. Man. 25 hits. That's nine. That's 11 bludgeoning. Just oh. And that's a soft crit because of the weird say, effects. Yeah. Not to reach into your pocket here, but. <laughs> so what do you do for a crit? Um, Whatever you, the dice you, you would want. So a, a D10. Yeah. Yeah. You, you roll, roll another D10. one. You keep you keep whatever the plus is, but you get to roll double Four. the dice. Oh, 15 then. All right. 15 uh, bludgeoning. Yeah. You smash into it for 15 bludgeoning. Very good. And another weird effect, an extra D force, D4 force. Uh, that's 16. Oh, that's nice. 16 total Ooh. damage. It screeches as the cavern shakes. And she's going to do it again. 19. 19 will just hit. Nice. 11 bludgeoning. Tw- 13 bludgeoning. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see Luke's okay. eyebrows go okay. up every single time I do <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait. Just got to make sure we're remembering that rage. All right. Yeah, I know. And... That's it. Uh, at the end of your turn, before Domo's turn, a pseudopod shoots out next to you, Musa. No. Attempting to hit you for 17 versus AC. Oh, oh God, that's yeah. dead little girl. That is going to be 23 points of bludgeoning damage. You. You see blood fly from Musa's nose, Domo, as a pseudopod shoots out, striking her, and she falls, collapsing over. Your world goes black, Musa. Mm. The creature screeches, the cavern shakes, Domo, you can feel pieces of rock crumbling from the the roof of the cavern. You're up. All right, Domo sees Musa goes down and does a little war cry. Says, "All right, lad, get stuck in there." And she's gonna run forward and uh, with advantage, is, uh, using the, my last inspiration, is gonna fire her bow at the big boogan. Twenty-two. Twenty-two will hit. And I, I don't know if I could trip this thing. I actually don't think I can because it's larger than the size. Uh, yeah, so you you just... can assume it's it's stuck to the ground at this point. Ooh. 
I has idea though. Maneuvering attack. Uh, Tolly can move half her speed. Nice. So, yeah, she can get closer to casting spells to help people up off the ground or something. Which way we should head? Uh, I Flash is going to get Vice if Tolly wants to try to pick up Musa. How does that sound? Cool. Uh, so all together, <laughs> that is going to be 24 piercing damage with her little battle cry. She slides behind the body of one of the frogs and action surges and fires again. You see 29. A... Oh, that totally hits. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, I already did sneak attack, so I can't do it again. But that's another 12 piercing damage. Nothing to sneeze at. Nice. Uh, viscous amounts of this black ichor are running out of the creature, the hexamol very now, as it begins to screech its form, uh, becoming a little less solid as it begins to shift and coagulate as it screeches aloud. Anything and else dumb? You know what I'm gonna. <clears throat> you know what I'm gonna do after that. I, I know it. You know it. Maneuvering attack. Three more damage. Tolly can move three again. Yeah. And I, I'm out of good boy points. I can't do any maneuvers anymore. Nice. But uh, yeah, 15, 22, 30, 39 damage altogether. And as a bonus action, she's not even done yet. Gonna take the help action again. Uh, and I have a different help action that I've never used before. I'm gonna use the Fae Power of Spite. Uh, his next, uh, Big Boogan's next attack uh, has disadvantage. And our next attack versus him has advantage. Uh, a very, very efficient use of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and and now that Domo's done barking orders, she ends her turn. Uh, with that, it is Flash's turn. Uh, Flash is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Also, power sliding behind one of these frogs' corpses. Mm -hmm. And he is going to healing word on Vice. <clears throat> um, it's a level one. I'm at negative level. nine, if that matters. It, you, you go to zero when you take healing. Oh, all right. Yeah, so you're you're up at five. <clears throat> and he can only do a cantrip. So he's going to do vicious mockery on the, uh. on, the, on the big guy. Is that a disadvantage on attack rolls? It is not an attack roll. It is it is a save. Save. Oh. Um. DC 15 wisdom save on big big guy. Uh, meets at 15. Okay, so he succeeds. Nothing happens. Okay. That's it for Flash. Um, the th very last thing you did, Domo, is that on its next attack? Is that the language? On its very next attack, okay. it has disadvantage. All right. The creature wails and screeches. You see pseudopods shooting out from its form now, wailing around, slapping around the area. A hardened mass begins to form as is at its stomach again and fires off at you, Domo. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh-oh. I didn't save any tricks for this. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. You're it's fine. That. You're good at that. Why should you expect it to go bad? <laughs> I actually am okay at dex saves. 18 was the total. Uh, you see a hardened mass of its form fire off your way, but with your 18, you're able to quickly do like a barrel roll out of the way as it misses you. Fucking rude. <laughs> um, you watch as the hardened mass strikes this running prisoner in the back, and just they just collapse oh. over as their body is snapped oh, no. in half. Oh no, no. <laughs> The other prisoners sorry, screech sorry. as they continue running. Um, away from pirate retirement. A pseudopod <laughs> appears next to you, Domo, and attempts to hit you for 23 versus AC. Oh, disadvantage. Good, 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 good. Uh, 17 versus AC. Ah, uh, still hits. Dang. That is going to be 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Not too bad. I'm bloodied again, but I'll 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 live maybe. 
The pseudopod shoots from the ground next to you, Vice. Actually, no, from its own form and attempts to strike at you, Vice. Just as you're clinging to life once again, the pseudopod swings way over your head, though, as a nearly critical Ooh. fail. Ooh. Good luck. One more shoots out of the ground, appearing next to you, Vice. This time for 18 versus AC. <laughs> Leave Vice alone. 18 will beat 17. No. All right. That's going to hit for 23 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, it's not fair. The creature. Not, I'm down again screeches oh. as you go black again it does not want to be hit by the thing that could hit it 30 times <laughs> it's smart enough to know that at least Ooh. That's, that's fair <laughs> flash is like oh well I'll, I'll get you again next time just hang in there buddy um it ends its turn vice you are out in between vice and tally a pseudopod with legendary action shoots out domo for 13 versus AC. Oh, whew, that's a miss, finally. It misses you. Tally, you are up. Uh, Vice does have to make a death Dude, saving yeah. throw. Do I oh, save yes. Or anything, or? I'm sorry. You were right. I need a death saving throw. Just a blank 20. Rally, 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 no rally, additions. Rally, 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 no rally. special cards. Just the luck of the D20. Really? 1 through 10 saves. 11, or no. 10 and up saves. 1 through 9 fails. Ugh, that's you enough. have one uh, death saving throw. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Tally, you are now up. Your world becomes a little darker, Vice. A little more distant. We run sorry, under to double, but then. Runs past Domo. To Musa, and. I think that's it. Do you not have healing words? She just has cure wounds. She just has cure wounds, yeah. Damn. Bummer. Um, I got a vial of acid. I'll pour that on her. Do <laughs> <laughs> not. Uh, <laughs> she kills the child. Um, kills the child. I maintain concentration on uh, this guy, though. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Still rocking. How does this work? Because she hasn't moved out of it. She should take it on her turn, then, I believe. On the start, of, uh, yeah. And the first time when it starts its turn there. Okay. All right. Um, so I missed it on the first go round, but uh, it's all right. Tally is done. All right. Uh, the prisoners at this point are able to clear past you all as they run towards the back, screeching at everything happening here that is pure chaos. Uh, Musa, you are up. Oh, Musa, hey. I need a death saving throw, but you succeed. What? You have one succeeded death saving throw. That's one. In between you and Camp Counselor Candy, Domo, a pseudopod appears from the ground and attempts to strike you. For 14 versus AC. Oh, geez. Just bounces off of her breastplate as she kind of mm. knocks the wind out of her. Yeah, nearly okay. knocked back, but you're all right. Counselor Candy is up. I guess that would trigger the moonbeam, correct? Con save. Con save or take. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that also sounds very much right for my moon baby. Uh, saves. She, she has disadvantage <laughs> oh. if, if she's a shapeshifter, though. Oh, uh, well. Uh, Here's the thing. It seems as though whatever damage she would take is king off of the hexamal variant. Even if that... Basically, the big reveal is doing what we already know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm um, with that. Yeah. Just lancing the boil that's burning its ass. I'm good with that. What was the DC? Uh, it DC? 14 con. Yeah, it's going to make that. It does two damage. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Moonbeam. Um, you watch as uh, Camp Counselor Kenny like takes a sidestep out of the Moonbeam. <laughs> says, well, that's, well, that's that. 
nice and particularly refreshing, but I don't think it's very helpful for me and my friend. She looks across the field and sees you, Lodger, and says, All right, let's try again. Will you please listen this time? No, 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 no. Actually, you know what? Let's have a little more fun. She says, pointing your way. I need you to please make me a wisdom saving throw. Is this a... Uh, this is not a charmed charm. effect. Not a charm. Whiz bang, whiz bang, whiz bang, 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 bang. I'm gonna use plus one. Fuck off. <laughs> Step. Uh, Lodger, you feel the world around you expand and grow larger oh, as you turn into one. a tiny little rabbit with oh, polymorph. No, he's oh, no. I'm a tiny rabbit. <laughs> Uh, with that, she passes to your turn. That actually doesn't change a whole lot. Bez, get to it, bud. <laughs> uh, it lowers my DPS a little bit, but all things said and done, things could be worse. Uh, Alright, I'm going to tell Bez to use my turn. Use my attack action. I can attack. Ooh, ooh. Seventeen misses. Seventeen bounces off of its long form. Fifteen misses. Then I'll use the last resource to make him an extra attack. And also, yay! Hey, Twenty oh, hits. For five slash damage. All right. The creature screeches. Viscous black fluid just pouring from its form now. Also, also, Lodger, to give you a little bit of good news, your first attack had advantage because I gave an order. Oh, so, sweet. So it was a 23, which would hit. Yeah. So that is a total of uh, 13 slashing damage altogether between those two hits. You strike into its form. The creature lurches up its cracked mouth opening wider than you've ever seen before as it screeches aloud. The cavern shakes in an uproarious scream, pieces of debris falling on top of you. The creature is weakened. Yeah, well, it's also got its speed reduced by 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, you each hear the sound of your hexes from your suits. It's reaching. It is time. And you watch as tethers from your hexy suits begin to shoot out and connect with a large creature as it writhes in pain and begins to slowly deflate. Mm -hmm. Your hexy suits begin to absorb it. Large trickles of the white viscous makeup of its body and biomass are pulled into your own suits, pulled from its uh, space here, leaving only a large very large hole that you would see in the ground here that just seems to go down into darkness. The cave finally stops shifting and shaking. Uh, that's it, little guy. Eat up. You'll be a proper warlord in no time. Each of you uh, turn to see Candy. She has a puzzled look on her face as she says well campers I did not expect an outcome like this though I do suppose it was an accident on my part giving you campers such dangerous weapons to wield Pro probably should have held on to those a little bit longer well hey either way I suppose you've really shown me what it means to graduate camp care as she is saying this, the world around you begins to shift and change. Before you can reach Musa to bring her back up and finish Tally, pieces of the world begin to shift in the kaleidoscope-like nature, glass shifting around as pieces of reality begins to break around you. Candy looks to you all and says, but, but wait, where are you going? There's so much more fun and learning we can do together. At least wait, let me make you a few more pies, she says, before the reality. 
Wait, Do- I... Domo wants to give her like a big boss salute as, <laughs> as we fade out of existence. I was gonna say, Candy, one more thing. I hate you. Uh-huh. Uh, and with that, and, and thank you. <laughs> uh, your reality, or this collateral reality, shatters around you, and you each feel yourselves being pulled out of it. The piercing nature of all of the shards you're used to seeing shoot towards you, pulling you from the collateral reality that you were currently at and away from it. As the light begins to transition, as each of you begin to pull yourselves together, you find that you are, once again, in the lab. Of Lexi and then I'll just move the map real quick here hang on just a second let's get rid of this let's get rid of this let's grab this here was our best mission yet I'm um, each of you find yourself standing on the teleporter pad with Musa still unconscious at your feet. <laughs> Poor Musa. I'm sure Charlie jumps on the uh, jumps to revive. Alright. Yeah. Um, Musa. Consciousness comes back to you as you pull yourself up, finding yourself back in Lexi's lab. Oh man. Oh, that was a lot. Whew. Lexi Good looks job, soldier. at each of you and says, Good job. You've returned again. Let's debrief some, shall we? And that is where we will end tonight's session. We so, did it, guys. <laughs> we well, did it. and we leveled up too. Isn't that did didn't we, you're, Jason? You're, you're right? close. You're close. Oh, okay. yeah. You're close. Uh, but not yet. Oh. Um. Soon though. <laughs> Thank you, everybody on the Twitch. I know we went long there, but I really appreciate uh, everyone sticking around. That was good to wrap up that arc. That was a lot of fun. Um, horror at Camp Jelly Jam. <laughs> yep. There you go. Uh, that was a Goosebumps book. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Discordian, for hanging out. Thank you, uh, Hazard and Hijinks. Thank you, Dice Legends. Thank you, Inna, for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have not already, please make sure and go follow the Twitter so you can stay up to date on my schedule. I do stream outside of our D&D on Fridays. I do Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturday nights. Tomorrow, I will be returning at 9.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time so we can maybe finish up Happy's Humble Burger Farm. A very weird horror game it's definitely strange but a lot of fun so come check it out then uh, if you want to get caught up on any of these episodes go over to the youtube page you can uh, get caught up on both this campaign and our previous ones if you want to get more insight into our homebrew world as well as get some cool digital and physical swag go check out the patreon uh, there's also the godmode.shop which by the way go over there now and slap in camp care is the word on ship on the uh, checkout and you'll get free shipping. So camp care, all caps, all one word, free shipping. All through this weekend till Monday, so go check that out. And um, yeah, if you want if you want any more info about my my shit, go over to uh, this linked up bio. It's got all my social stuff on there, so go check that out. All right, we're headed out. It's super late. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Um, I'm going to play our outro, which is uh, how uh, Dungeons & Dragons turns you into a devil worshiper. But as I do, I'm going to go find you a, another fun D&D stream to watch that I uh, at least know through through the contact. So thank you all so much. Make sure those of you out there drink plenty of water, get plenty of rest, take care of yourselves. Try not to get COVID. I know everyone in the world is getting it, but just try and stay safe. I want you healthy and happy and come back next week. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time, you say, "Wait, it does what? Does what are you talking about, Discordian?" Uh, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head, I'm gonna move things over to this raid now. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. 
See you next time. Kids are becoming acclimated to this very kind of thing. And I began to look through the instruction manual and I see here how to cast magical spells and uh, ma mage spells and cleric spells. And you go to the pages that it's listed on, in this instance, page 41, and they have complete descriptions of how to cast spells and how to contact powerful spirits and how to use these spirits and these powers to overcome, obviously, uh, evil or good because there's both white and black magic in these books. We picked up another one to see if that was just coincidence, and it's dungeon magic here. And we look through again, and we see in here, casting magic spells, page 22, with a complete description. And it says here, um, each wizard has mastered a certain type of magic. When you meet a wizard, he will give you four basic elements of his mystical studies. So we have a wizard now teaching the children of his magical studies. And then here it says, it is important to remember that the source of all magic is the life force of the user. This is the teaching of the occult. 